I came to AEW to dominate. Number one, Jeff Perry. Nobody is going to take this away from me. This is mine once again. D. All right, hello everybody and welcome to this week's AEW Dynamite Review Show and and a little double trouble here preview and prediction show for AEW Revolution that is happening. Mary, help me out. Saturday or Sunday? I should have asked you before we started recording. It, it is starting on Sunday and welcome back folks. I'm here another week. Uh yeah, I was asked back. I guess we did well last week. <laughs> the ratings were in. Mary had a great quarter hour, so we thought we'd bring you back uh, just to keep those viewers uh, throughout the entire two-hour podcast. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're, uh, we were just talking about beforehand. I think we're just probably going to run through the Dynamite card from last night, guys, and, 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 and go through... Um, and go through the pay-per-view card in the meanwhile. And obviously, we a big announcement to start the show that we're going to talk about. So there's definitely a lot going on, as always. I'm sure we're going to miss a few things. But, you know, Mary, uh, let me just ask you right off the bat. I-, I texted you this morning, and I was like, I felt, like, emotional about this. But, like, tell me what were your initial reactions on the Tony Khan announcement that he has purchased uh, Ring of Honor? Um, it, was, it was a shock a little bit. Um, I didn't know exactly what direction you know tony khan was heading in with his announcements it seems like every week he has a big announcement mm-hmm. he's he's making a lot of moves um fast um again this is still a new company so uh, when that was announced i was like oh crap i was like that's pretty rad um i i don't know i wouldn't use emotional i was excited i i, I think it's a solid move um roh as we know has been struggling um and it's basically given us every big name that is here today, um, you know, starting with CM Punk and, and Brian Danielson. And it was really cool that they had uh, Christopher Daniels wrestle Brian Danielson as a throwback to the first main event of an ROH show. So I thought it was it was cool because we live in a day right now where we've had Vince McMahon buy every territory and, you know, it's just because he wants to own everything. Um, there are rumors coming out now that WWE was in talks to buy ROH, uh, before Khan stepped in. And I just feel, you know, everything that McMahon touches either gets thrown out or bastardized or whatever. So if I think it's really cool that Tony Khan was like, okay, this, this federation is going kind of under, but it has like this really good history. It was the first big thing to come out after the WCW WWE merger um, in the early 2000s, um, and it was the alternative place for people to watch wrestling for years um, till this day. And um, I just think it's good. It's kind of like a feeder league. I don't know what he's going to do with it, but I was just really happy that this guy was like, "No, I'm not going to let this place go under. I'm not going to let the competition get it because." Every time that this happened, you know, we've we've lost um, another part of professional wrestling that has been turned into this mainstream thing that uh, not a lot of people like. Um, so I was excited. I guess that's the only thing I, I could say about it. I didn't get emotional. I, I mean, to be quite honest, I wasn't watching ROH when um, it started or, you know, through its heyday, um, even when Punk and, and, and Brian were there and Samo Joe and, and AJ Styles and, and all these amazing wrestlers that we have in present day. I was not really watching wrestling back then. Um, but as soon as I started, started watching wrestling again around 2011 2012 and fell in love with cm punk i immediately went back and watched all his stuff in roh and and caught daniel bryan and caught samoa joe i mean i have a bootleg cd of the summer of punk the original one from roh so um it's interesting it's going to be interesting to see what he does with it um roh is now going to be able to be on a nationwide platform if people listening don't know they were owned by a broadcasting company that was regional um and not a very good broadcasting company sinclair is uh kind of evil um so it's exciting to see what's going to go on with roh and i i truly believe that tony khan is not going to um just like absorb it into aew or make it make it like you know a uh, merger i think that it's gonna stay its um own entity what do you think yeah i um i mean i don't know that seemed clear boatloads of money too so it's kind of crazy to me that I, I just like i don't know i guess i guess there's never no such thing as enough money but i, I was kind of weird to me that 
there are there are varying reports, and, and I'm going to credit um, cagesideseats.com, um, uh, and I'll even we'll put the link to this to this uh, website or this article on um, website. How old am I? I'll put that link to the <laughs> article uh, in the in the description of this podcast because uh, I you know want to credit the sources, but I'm just I was just scanning through some of this stuff before too. Just of you know, most of this I assume is speculation, but just some more behind the announcement itself. There's some reports, and I heard about this from um, earlier today. Um, Cassidy Haynes, BodySlam.net, says that uh, Tony Khan paid somewhere from thirty to forty million for Ring of Honor. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, that that's again when you're that's like to me if you're a Sinclair, that's that's a couple hundred dollars. You know what I mean in comparison. Yeah. So whatever. Uh, uh, I guess besides the point, but it was, I just wasn't, I, I thought that this could be an, the announcement, but I just kind of wasn't expecting it. Cause I, I thought the, the realisticness of, of, you know, people with, with that much amount of money wanting, uh, wanting to sell this property and, and what it's worth to like someone like Tony Khan, I assume maybe they got that much money too, probably for, um, all the, the back catalog, right. Of all these, like you just mentioned a bunch of amazing names, right. And a, a bunch of amazing matches. Now AEW will own the footage to all in the original all in, uh, no news though. And I was curious about this. If, uh, ring of honors booker, uh, Hunter Johnson is going to stay as their booker or not, but it does sound like from, from, again, this is mostly, I assume this is mostly just speculation from, uh, from some of the, you know, you all know the guys, uh, Sean Ross Sapp, Cassidy Haynes, et cetera, et cetera. The dirt sheets. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I just didn't, I did, I already said website today. I just didn't want to read myself <laughs> anymore. Uh, but, uh, that they're looking to use Ring of Honor as a developmental territory of sorts, uh, for some people, uh, who aren't getting as much TV time on, you know, Dynamite and stuff. Funny enough, they have Dark and stuff like that already, but again, you know, it's 2022, content is the game. You're talking to yeah. two women who, you know, can bang out a two-hour show, so just talking about wrestling. So content is the game, right? So it makes sense why Tony Khan would sp- spend that amount of money for, for, this is like good content, too, and... um. And you mentioned something about WWE too, and, and I'm glad it, this this article also, also talks about how uh, WWE did have preliminary conversations with Sinclair about buying Ring of Honor several years ago, uh, but nothing came out of the discussions. And thank the Lord, because mm-hmm. remember when Evolve was like kind of catching yep. some traction, mm-hmm. and then WWE bought it, and just yep. we just never heard of it again. Yep. Yep, yep, and, and and I also think that probably the price tag, in addition to the to the library, obviously, and it's it has all these legends that are current legends now, you know, starting out in their career. Yeah. I also think that even though the you know the reports are in 2018, Triple H was interested in buying ROH kind of as a feeder thing, um, you know, and look where Triple H is now. You know, again, this is a WWE podcast, but you know that is the elephant in the room. Um, this would have been like completely taken away, like NXT was, but. I, I think where there's smoke, there's fire. I, I do think that even though nothing came out of it, maybe Vince was trying to buy it again. And Sinclair was like, oh, okay, well, we got this billionaire and this billionaire. You're going to have to, you know, jack up the price. Um, and I maybe Vince wasn't willing to pay that much money. Um, I read in somewhere one of the reports that I was reading today that he wanted to buy New Japan. And New Japan, you can't, you can't buy New Japan. Like, no foreign, like, you know. Um, Federation wanted to do business like that with him. So I, I don't know. Maybe he didn't think it was worth it. But I do think that that probably had to do with the price tag being so high. I mean, because it is. It's ROH. I, I, I'm not, like, poo-pooing on it or anything like that. But it is a small indie league. Is it the top indie league? Yes, absolutely. Everybody knows what ROH is. If you are a wrestling fan, you know where people have been coming out of for the last 20-some-odd years because we, you know, everything got bought up. Like, we just, like we just talked and there was just NXT um, to developmental talent. If you weren't in NXT, you were in New Japan or ROH. So um, I, I'm not saying it was not worth 30 and $40 million. I absolutely think it is, but it, it's just kind of weird that like this small little indie promotion that started back in like what, 2015, 2000, uh, I'm sorry, 2005, 2004, all of a sudden it is worth like this huge amount of wealth because of the names that it's produced. But I also think that, you know, WWE probably got wind of it and 
and, and we know how Vince is. He wants to own everything and he wants to rule everything. So it wouldn't be surprised if he kind of went back to that. And also, you know, it's a slap in the face to his son since he's destroyed everything his son-in-law has created. So he'd be like, oh, you wanted it back then? I'm going to buy it now that you're not in charge. And that was my best Vince McMahon impersonation. <laughs> it wasn't bad. You need, you need to smoke a little bit more, I think. Not because Vince McMahon smokes or whatever look at a cigarette, but I think it's just, it's just he's got the voice. Yeah, I, um, I mean, the, of course, a bunch of news about that today, too, but I'm not, I'm not even going to touch that with the 10 for poll. Yeah. But we will talk. T- Tony Khan, I actually want to get into the announcement itself. The last thing I will say on this, though, was um, just for anybody who doesn't know or isn't as cued in with all this stuff, um, I remember when the first reports came out about Ring of Honor, uh, you know, uh, releasing their talent, but not, 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 in, let me just put it this way, not in the same way WWE re- releases their talent, right? It's not like, oh, you're gone, bye, here's a trash bag yeah. with your stuff. It's, I'm going to pay you for this amount of time, you know, kind of, re- it's kind of like they, they get severance from what I understand when they were released. Um, and most of the, these people were, were aware of what was going on. But um, according to, again, to this, this article and, and, and any really news stories from beforehand, uh, like Ring of Honor's roster, for lack of a better term, is empty. Uh, anybody who uh, had a contract, it was either released or their contract ends up, uh, ends this month. So mm-hmm. people like, you know, the big names, and, and I don't know about you, but like uh, the biggest one I'm thinking about is the Briscoes. I think Jonathan Gresham was reported to be behind, mm-hmm. uh, behind the curtain at one of these AEW Dynamites a couple weeks ago. So we're definitely going to be getting some big names from Ring of Honor. I, I don't think this is going to be the same Ring of Honor that it was, of course, but... Uh, it, it'll be interesting. I, I don't... It's funny. I, I think... I don't have a lot of excitement for the future. I'm curious. Uh, and I and I don't mean to be pessimistic. And I, I don't even think I have a pessimistic, pessimistic view. I just don't have high hopes, if that makes any sense. I'm like... I'm not down on it. I'm just not expecting a lot. Um, and I'm hoping to be surprised. But I think the back catalog alone is really what's going to be uh, the biggest deal this whole thing, at least for now. Because I assume we're not we're not too far away from... You know, AEW network being on uh, HBO Max or having their own network or whatever with all the content that they have uh, being the elite. I'm sure all this stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe I'll do something with YouTube, too. They seem to be happy on YouTube, so... Yeah, I mean, I was going to segue into that, too. I also think that this is leading to a streaming service for AEW. I don't think it's going to be like... um how WWE Network was when it first debuted. It'll be with a provider that is already established. Um, HBO Max interface is just as terrible as Peacock. So yeah. it makes sense that HBO... I mean, I, I, I honestly didn't think that HBO would have a stake in wrestling, but I mean, it is 2022 and content is king. Um, so you want to have things like that. And I was just talking about this to my coworker last night that I was like, oh, I got to pay like 60 bucks for a pay-per-view on Sunday. Now, this isn't me complaining. I just got spoiled by the fact that I pay for a streaming service and the pay-per-views are included. And, you know, AEW doesn't have a pay-per-view every month, so it's not too much of a, you know, a dig in my wallet. But it would be nice to be able to go back and watch, you know, since it's so new, there isn't that much content. It's like if I was going to try to watch Monday Night Raw from the beginning, I would, I would be probably dead by the time I finish. Mm. But going back and watching the first, like, two years, year and a half of AEW before I was really on board and I was just kind of catching it every now and then would be great. And to see the original all in and now being able to go back and watch, like, all the punk matches that I didn't see that I don't have on DVD and, you know, watching AJ Styles, watching Samoa Joe watching Brian Danielson like all the guys that I I love currently um I think that that was a big thing too because while they are very new they don't have a lot of content like you said like it's only three years like how much you know I think that's a lot but wrestling fans are crazy and you see how big WWE's catalog is which is why I still think it was stupid for them to go to Peacock because Peacock doesn't know how to manage their content and have cut out a lot of their history because of violence and stuff like that and if you want to watch it, you should be able to watch it. You know what I mean? So it's just, it, I think it was a business move also. And uh, let's save what has been there and has led up to AEW being here today. I think he is kind of preserving the history of it because he didn't want to get lost. Because I don't I don't think AEW would exist if ROH didn't have the success that it did as an independent company. Yeah, I agree, and I think I think we're kind of on this, along the same lines of that. If I'm looking at it more of, of what did he just buy that they already have, 
less of like it's kind of like I don't know if anybody sports fans or whatever. It's like it's like I, to me he bought the Lakers right, who have a man, LeBron James, who's waiting for his son to get in the league, and Russell Westbrook, who looks about, like, has the skin complexion of, like, my grandmother, you know what I mean, like, these people are not uh, spring chickens anymore, versus, like, if you bought uh, the Hornets, right, like, a super young team, uh, who have a lot of potential, but, you know, aren't, you're not going to be winning anything yet, anytime soon. There's a lot more developing that has to go on. I would say, to me, this is like buying the Lakers. You get the name value of the Lakers, yeah. same thing. You get the name value of Ring of Honor. You get the you get the LeBron James, the LeBron Jameses of the pro wrestling world, right? But you, mm-hmm. uh, but where's the future for the LA Lakers look? It's not not super bright in comparison to everything else. So, and then again, but you never know. Things turn around. So I'm I'm hopeful. Or I'm not I'm not um I keep saying I want to say I'm hopeful, but I'm not even hopeful. I'm just um I have no expectations. I'm 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 I think that's always the best way to approach anything like this anyway. You know how like stickler wrestling fans are. I think it was just good for professional wrestling. I, I it was very good that ROH was required acquired by AEW and not WWE. You you need um, different content, um, you know, and even as much as I, I, I crap on WWE now, it is an alternative for people who do not want to see, like, what happened last night with CM Punk and MJF. I'm sure we are going to get into it. I heard mm-hmm. kids screaming in the audience, so that's all I'm going to say. That's why you have the other alternative, but, like, for, for pure wrestling fans, that was, that was throwback, you know, and anybody who knows Punk's history – knows everything that was going on right there was straight out of ROH. So I, I, I'm hopeful actually. I, I don't think it's better to be in Tony Khan's hands than to be in somebody else's hands, because even though you're right, it's probably going to be a different looking ROH. If it does come back as a separate organization or a feeder, you know, they have a huge roster and they have a lot of green talent and they need somewhere to put these people so they can, you know, uh, hone their craft. Um, I don't think dark and elevation is enough because they have so many people. Um, I, I do think that he's not going to bastardize it. It's still going to be at its heart ROH. And, you know, even with the references that Brian Danielson was making last night about the handshake of honor and all that stuff, I don't think that he's going to be like, all right, well, we're going to just completely change it. ROH 2.0. Oh my he's God. Gonna I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> he's going to, he's going to keep its bones. You know what I mean? It's, it's still going to, you're going to watch it. You're going to be like, okay, I'm happy that this is here, that it didn't go under, that a broadcasting company didn't destroy it, that it's in the hands of a wrestling fan who is a fan of ROH and is working with these people that built ROH. So he's going to know what to do with it, even if it's a little different. So I, I think you should be hopeful and excited about it. Uh, it's, it's good to see something, like I said, that has created most of the talent that people are watching today on TV, national TV, that it was saved and not buried, you know, not to use a, a, a term but buried in in the history of wrestling, which happened for a long time with WWE owning the tapes for Mid-South and NWA and all these things. People didn't know what that was. Um, and it's really, really important to know your history, even if it's not your cup of tea. That kind of wrestling is not my cup of tea, but I know if my father was still alive and he had access to the network, you know, if I gave him my account, that's what my dad would have been watching. Mm-hmm. My dad would have been watching all that stuff, you know? So yeah. I think it's a good move. No, 100%. I agree. And, and um, the more you're talking about it, the more I, I am a little bit more excited. I, I have to say, I think my ideal, and again, this is my ideal as someone who doesn't know anything, right? Like, I'm just another fan talking amongst fans, but like, it would be like 2015 NXT if the main roster was good. Yes. Like, I want that kind of vibe where it'd be cool to see. So let's say, let's say somehow, some way, John Moxley, we've gotten him, enough of him on TV for the, you know, two years time, right? Like he's just been doing a whole run, all this other stuff. And maybe he needs a little freshening up. Miro, maybe we said Miro to be the, you know what? I'm calling it now Miro to be the first Ring of Honor, uh, new Ring of Honor world champion, at least. Um, Cause I could see that happening with under AEW's regime for lack of a better term. Like just sending these guys who, who, um, it's it's funny. It's amazing what like a different background setting can do. I, I, I hate to use this analogy as well too, but just look at Drew McIntyre. Like yep. when not anymore, right? Because the man is going around threatening to you know cut people's heads off. Uh, but 
groan inducing. <laughs> but but the first time you saw him go from red to blue, it's like, oh, it's like a new yeah. coat of paint. It's kind of like yeah. when you, you paint, it's, if I go outside and I paint my car a different color, it's going to look nice. But yeah, it's still going to have like cigarette stains on the inside. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, and and that's and to your point, that's that's why it's great because I mean it's happened with not just Drew. I mean, look at Cody Rhodes, look at AJ Styles when he left TNA. I mean, he was the face of TNA, and he went over to Japan, and it was like holy crap! Like he became everybody knew he was good when he was in TNA. But I'm, right? I guess I'm I'm referring. I don't mean to cut you off. I'm referring to like this is the same company, but still yeah. just like. Like, so AEW to Ring of Honor, just the different background of like, oh, I'm in Ring of Honor now, even though we're all still in AEW, you know what I mean? Technically, if you want to look at it like that. Um, I don't know, again, how the business side would be, but like, I can't imagine what it'll do for some people who just maybe, like, I bet you there are people going to be like, Kip Sabian might thrive in Ring of Honor. Like, yeah, you never know. Brian Cage might be on, finally get enough TV time for his wife's liking. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like, but it's also, I mean, if you're going to go in that argument, same company, it's exactly what was going on with the main roster when people came up from NXT and they went to the main roster and it was terrible. They went back to NXT when when Trips was still in charge and they were over again. Mm-hmm. You know, they did it with Finn. They they did it. Um, I'm trying to remember the other people, but it's happened before. It's the same thing. And for some reason, you know, that's just showing that it was in different hands creatively right but you're right it is the same company but aew you know nothing's going to be perfect all the time again new company still finding its footing you know the last couple weeks the last month has been really really hot for aew i feel like they're finally you know getting that good balance um they're figuring out stuff a little better but yeah it's it's going to be the same creative hands so like they're trying stuff and some of it works, some of it doesn't. But I, again, I just don't, I think this is a plus. Um, and like, you're right. Somebody like Miro, Kip Sabian, who I haven't seen on TV since I've been watching it. I know they have all these names that are super talented and they have people that are green that are going to be huge. You know, all these young guys that are wrestling that are, you know, rookies, I guess you could say, still are like blow my mind on a weekly basis. So, you know, just to wrap this up, because I think we we could talk about this for a whole entire know, it's a show. Whole, it's it's yeah. a podcast. Yeah, it, I I think this is good. Um, I again, I want to say emotional. I was excited because you never, like I said, you never want to see something that you know that is basically the backbone of what professional wrestling is today go away. And um, I I think it was a good save by Tony Khan, and I'm I'm pretty confident in this guy he's a goofball and a doof i mean i saw him on tv last night i was like this guy is doofy as hell but i'd rather yeah. have that doofy doofy as hell guy who's having fun and and knows what modern wrestling is than have a dinosaur you know just take it mess with it for a couple months completely change it and then just like be like oh if you want to watch it it's on our back catalog right you know yeah. let's see what happens first no, a hundred percent agree. And I and I and I, my my last analogy is is I don't know if you ever watched those shows like Chicago Fire, Chicago PD. No. <laughs> what about I don't watch any those shows. like Shonda Rhimes show ever, like Grey's Anatomy or nope. any? Nope, not my cup of tea, honey. Well, you You're know what? There might be somebody out there. Right? <laughs> the only time I ever watched like the Chicago ones, I think it was on a plane, and you know where you only get to pick a couple things this from the TV thing, like an international flight. But I will say. When there's uh, people who have seen those shows know like that the crossover feeling, like yeah. I, I'm hoping it, the crossover feeling is what I'm trying to get across is what it, is what you get. It's just like a different coat of paint. For some reason, the greatest thing you can do in pro wrestling to get yourself over is go away. Yep, and come and, back. and that that element of wrestling was taken away for a long time. You mm-hmm. know, um, Vince went rampant and bought every territory, and that's how it used to work. Like you got stale somewhere, you left, you went somewhere else, you came back. Maybe you had a new gimmick. I mean, if that if that didn't happen, we wouldn't have President Day Undertaker. Like, do you know how many incarnations Mark Callis was before he was the Undertaker? Mm-hmm. Like he was all these different things, and it was just shipping him around and seeing what worked. You know, so. Uh, that's why I think wrestling becomes stale and, and you can't stick to a formula. Characters have to evolve. Um, and you need that element. You you need other options. And like I said, ROH was the first alternative after like the last big, you know, thing was bought. So you, you need to go away. You're absolutely 100% right. People will get sick of you. You can't stay on top and you gotta like rotate and make stars all the time. And, um, we've seen in real time what happens (laughs) when that's not an option and people, you know, people on Twitter and on the internet can, 
make their their stance and and be like you're wrong but it's the truth and if you are a real wrestling fan you know that and and there's no argument there no absolutely and and then we'll move on after i just i'll say that i 100 percent agree and 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 i will say just the other side of this too is you know i hope uh i hope that this is the only company that aew ever purchases you know yep. i hope that uh as the pandemic we're still in a pandemic, guys. But as the pandemic slowly but surely, right, it seems like there are less and less cases. And, and we've been here before, but hopefully things are looking up. Uh, that the indie scene starts to slowly build back up again. And I always shout out, um, you know, not just like the wrestlers, but the referees who are on those indie scenes. And, you know, we had an awesome, we were able to interview um, someone who does the, like, annou- ring announcers at some of those indie shows on this show. So all those people, it, like, the wrestling business thrives like a healthy ecosystem when there's a lot of stuff going on. It doesn't thrive like a, like Mary said, when, when, um, when there's one company that's buying everybody out and you're all stuck watching one thing, the more pro wrestling content there is that's out there, the better, you know, yep. MLW, for some reason I was thinking about MLW today too. Like the more content there is that out is out there. And, and if you have never watched anything else besides WWE and, um, and AEW, like, Go give it a shot. It's gonna be. It's like it's a little bit of a culture shock, especially yeah. especially if you've only ever really watched WWE. But like, I remember I watched uh, WCPW. Uh, this is like Will Ospreay Ricochet. I don't know if you've ever heard of that match. The, it, some people call it an atrocity. Some people call it a masterpiece, right? But like, uh, when I first watched one of those shows. I think I watched, was it, it might have been Ricochet versus Rey Mysterio, or Will Ospreay versus Rey Mysterio, or I forget exactly what it was, but uh, I was like, oh, like, this is weird, like, and, and then GCW is its own, you know, can of worms, and then there are so many other companies out there, so, um, I, like, broaden your horizons, there's more out there, if you don't like this, if, if you don't like certain stuff on here, like, there's so, and, and you get to watch these guys, like, eventually... I don't want to say make it to the major leagues, but just like become, you know, TV stars and sensations yeah. too. So it's it's an interesting thing to watch when you follow a wrestler. You Do know, you remember your first career. the first indie match or whatever you ever watched? Like I said, I was out of the game for know, I'm sending you for back. for a good for a good uh, after Benoit the whole Benoit situation. I kind of took a, a a reprieve from wrestling because that mm. that really killed the innocence of it for me. Yeah, um, I was still watching sporadically, but I wasn't involved. And then like I came back um, after me and my ex broke up because I had a lot of time. I, mm. I started watching Raw again, and so that was like t- 2011. Um, and yeah, I mean, I I. You know, I found Punk because Punk was the best thing in WWE at the time because WWE was hot garbage then. I don't know mm-hmm. if it was worse then or worse now, but like they're neck it's and neck now. right now. And yeah, I mean, it was pretty bad with John Laurinaitis and 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 the women's division. It was. Whew, it made a terrible. little bit of sense back then, though. Like it made a little yeah, bit of sense. Yeah, a little bit, but I mean, it was just not the, the only reason I was watching WWE TV was because of CM Punk. Um, mm-hmm. so you know, I got curious, and there's the internet, and you start watching. So yeah, I didn't really watch an indie match until like 2011, 2012. Like that's when I I discovered what Ring of Honor was, and then I got mad because I realized that they were doing shows this whole entire time, like basically in my backyard. And I could have went to them, and instead I was in a terrible relationship and doing terrible things with my life, you know. So um, that's basically when I got introduced that there was like, hey, there was life after after you know WCW was bought by WWE. It wasn't just WWE. I knew of TNA, but I also knew it wasn't very good, except a couple people here and there. Um, so I just, you know, I I was totally not in the loop, and um, that's when I started watching you know, independent wrestling. Um, I've never been fully engaged in it. There has been stuff that I've seen that I don't like. Like I don't like death matches. I, I, I like blood, but I only want it when you need it. I'm not a fan of the extreme, extreme wrestling. So, mm-hmm. you know, I know, and that was a big thing for a while when I, when I started watching again, you know, and that's where John, John was in uh John Moxley was in CZW for a time, but that was what I started learning that there were all these other federations. And I know that if at any point I, I want to jump off the main, stream boat i could i can watch this stuff and i met all my wrestling friends on twitter that's when i started doing twitter and i i I found the wrestling community as hating using cliche words but they were 
sending me DVDs. You know, they they were like, oh, hey, well, check this out and check this out. And I got this and I got that. And that's that's how I got back into the game, I guess. Yeah, again, it's it's nice to find those. It's nice to know that there are people on Twitter that aren't awful. But mm-hmm. um, <laughs> but very true. <laughs> and 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 uh, it, and I and then we can move on. I promise after this. But I say I'll compare it to like, uh, like pop music. You know what I mean? If you want to look at WWE as like pop music, yeah, like there there's gonna be like a good pop song from time to time, right? Like yeah. that everybody really likes and stuff like that. Absolutely. Um, but it doesn't make you any less cool or more cool if you listen to indie music or you watch indie shows or whatever. Like, yeah. first of all, being a cool wrestling fan is like sitting at the cool table at a men's school <laughs> institution. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, sorry, we're all, if you're listening to this podcast, you're a dork, you're a dork. And you're a geek. Yes, welcome. <laughs> Right, I'm sure you come to terms with that. I always joke that it was harder for me to come out of the the wrestling fan closet than it was the other one. Um, <laughs> that's that's a very good analogy. Like, yeah, man, if you're if you're watching pro wrestling on some sort of level, you're a nerd. Like, there's just there's no there there there, there you might be a different kind of nerd, but there's no you know they always say like, what's the worst like fan base? Is it Star Wars? comics or wrestling you're in one of those buckets you know and if you're mm-hmm. in one of those buckets you're you're a nerd so just come to terms with it and accept it and wave your nerd flag you know and i don't mean that's kind... a cooler nerd because you watch this thing in new japan it doesn't make i've just i've i've seen yeah. so many takes like that and so many people like ashamed to be like oh well i haven't watched that or pretend to know about this like i don't know jack about new japan i am so yeah, literally learning more and more yeah. Um, I, I want to be able to watch the, um, Kenny Omega, uh, and I f- always forget, I, like, I always mispronounce their name, so I'm always worried to talk about it on the show. Like, there's, there's so many other things, I just don't have the time yet to sit down and actually, cause that's stuff I actually want to watch. But it doesn't make you a bad fan, a good fan, like, just to, just, just not to, like, get on a soapbox. But if anybody's out there and insecure about any of that stuff, don't be. But I will say, though, and I, and I hate to say it, if you are just strict WWE fan, and you don't really know the history of wrestling, like modern WWE stands. Again, hate using the terminology. You do. You are repulsive. Like, because it's just like you can't have. And there are people who do the whole same thing with AEW now. It's like it's like our country. It's divided. You have to be one or the other. And those people are the most obnoxious of all wrestling fans. Because, um, you know, even at, I have been watching WWE since I, I can't even remember. You know, and this is like the first time that I've actually kind of taken a stance and been like, nope, I'm not on this train anymore, you know, and I'm happy that AEW is there because I would have stopped watching wrestling, but you don't have any right to come after me and be like, you just like the crap on the WWE. No, I can. I've been watching the WWE probably, and half the people that come at me on Twitter, like, I'm twice their age. And I'm like, I've been watching this before you were even, like, sperm in your in your father's balls. Like, mm-hmm. please, don't, like, don't come off like that. It's You want to have a conversation? That's cool. But don't, you know, don't don't make assumptions. Everybody's right to their opinion, but when you come off like that, yeah, that's absolutely. what I have an opinion about you. You know, like, it's just get off your horse you know like we said you know the more wrestling out there the better like why would you why would you go to would you go to the food court that has two options or would you go to the food court that has 50 options yes um you don't only and if you want to go to the food court that has two options because you really like one of those that's cool too just don't you know mess with Mary and I over here in the fifty food <laughs> court option. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about this match first of all. Though I have to shout out Tony Khan is such a dork, and and he's clearly <laughs> much better at these press conferences, like and stuff like that. Like he's not, he is not made to cut a wrestling promo. He is like all of us who probably I don't know if any of you ever wanted to be a professional wrestler when you grew up, but then you looked down and you saw your arms were like you know the size of the pencil next to you. Or I don't know whatever it was, right? Or like I for myself like. I have the cardio of an 80-year-old woman. Uh, so <laughs> pre, this is like pre-ever smoking a cigarette in my life, too. And I was like, it's not going to happen for me. Um, <laughs> no self-discipline. But, like, uh, Tony Khan is that with a wrestling promo. It just, yeah. it's not, it, it didn't work. Uh, but he was cute, and he was overexcited, and it was, um, it was not, it was like watching, it's like, I assume it's like what, what being a parent, again, we could talk to Matt because we don't really know, but, um, I assume it's what it looks like to see your kid on Christmas morning. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he was super like excited. I was really happy for him. And when somebody's like, 
actually excited you about it and love. it's not yeah. about yeah it's not about the money you know it's not like oh i just bought, i just made a business deal and i'm gonna get all this money out of it he was just genuinely happy that he was able to do that and that he's he's doing this thing that people have been clamoring for forever you know like again even just go you just having one option people get tired and sick and they want alternatives and uh, he's he was super happy and it was nice it 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 didn't feel like a cold callous businessman decision it was something that he really 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 was excited and i think he was also taken aback that he was able to do it and you know fortunately you know tony khan's got some money yeah exactly Um, i you know i'm not gonna i'm not trying to blow you know smoke up a a billionaire's butt but but you know that's like me me being a billionaire and being able to you know buy the rights to marvel comics and make the movies even though i would never do as good of a job as disney is doing but you get what i'm saying like it wouldn't just be like a business decision it would be like oh my god i love this thing so much and now i own it and now i can i can do what i think the fans actually want you know yeah to um, me it's, it's kind of like what happy. we do here you know yeah it's it's like just fans talking about wrestling like with uh, two other fans right to me he's just and, and and i would like to think at least like i think most of us dictate ourselves pretty well not most of us all of us all right dictate ourselves pretty well and that's why we're able to do this in this audio you know medium and we were talking before the show too right like mary and i can talk you know we could talk to a wall probably um and uh let alone we i mean we kind of do considering what we're doing right now but like um <laughs> But it's kind of like the same thing. We're just fans talking about wrestling. Tony Khan is just a fan, and somehow he's got a really good wrestling mind, too, and he's definitely combined with a lot of wrestling minds. You study something enough, you're going to learn about it. Um, mm-hmm. so, Absolutely. But I, uh, the, the shout-out to Shane McMahon, he was like, it's not Shane McMahon! <laughs> it's just, yeah, yeah, his it was funny. voice is so weird, it just carries oddly. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't. He's like a kid at a candy store going, "Mom, yes. I want that lollipop." Yes, and you're exactly. like, "Okay, yeah, I'll get you. I'll get you the lollipop, honey." It's, it's like, okay. "Mom, but not yeah. that lollipop. Not that millionaire son. I'm this millionaire son." Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Um, and we. I did it, Dad. Exactly, Dad. Look at me. <laughs> okay. <we're a> <laughs> Uh, we touched a little bit on the match, but yes, it was thanks to see Christopher Daniels back in. And um, that, that moonsault, by the way, the best man. moonsault ever. It's just, the man is 51 years old. So, you know what? To me, that is the best moonsault ever. <laughs> I'm it's... 51 and I can do a backflip. I'm 23 and I can't do a backflip now. So, I don't know about uh, I don't know about that. But I, I really like the match, and, and we can talk about the post-match, too. And, and that brings us to our first uh our first revolution match, which is the, I'm super excited to talk about Brian Danielson versus John Moxley. So, um, I thought the match was just nice. It doesn't really take a lot of analyzing, which is good. Cause we spent about an hour talking about ring of honor. Um, <laughs> but that's my fault. But, um, but the, after the match, obviously Brian Danielson won by referee stoppage and he did his little muscle pose. And then, Oh, he's so good. Brian Danielson. He's so good. He goes and says, you know, we shake hands in ring of honor. We shake hands after the match. And he goes to shake Christopher Daniels' hand, who, who's, by the way, like, had the perfect amount of offense where he didn't look like a chump, but he's also a 51-year-old man against Brian Danielson, who's not, you know, a spring chicken either, but you would never guess watching him. Uh, and Brian Danielson takes the hand, and then he goes, I'm going to stomp his head in. And, uh, and does, just, when you know, when they showed you a little bit of what Christopher Daniels' eye looked like, every single stomp, I was like, it's kind of like every time... Uh, Kenny Omega did a V trigger uh, uh, back at Grand Slam. It's like you know that there's something messed up where that person's kicking or punching or attacking, and it just was, uh, it was brilliant. So, uh, and then obviously we had John Moxley come out and cut a promo. But Mary, what what were your thoughts the match, the post match, and and um, and I guess we can start predicting what's going to go down on. Uh, what did we say? Was it Sunday or Saturday? It's Sunday. God, I need Sunday, another cup Sunday, of coffee. Sunday. <laughs> it's all good. Sometimes they have their pay-per-views on Saturday. No, it is the 6th. It is on Sunday. A um, couple things. One, um, throw it back to Daniel Bryan first. And you're saying he's not a spring chicken. Daniel, and I said it on, I said it right after the match and the promo and everything last night. Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson, and I will continue calling him Daniel Bryan because I am trained that way. Sorry, guys. I think every, I think the announcer was called him it again last Brian, night. Brian, just I go with Brian. Brian, call him yeah. the American Dragon. <laughs> I used to call him D Bry, and now like I can't. So Bry-D. like having, yeah, Bry D um, is doing the best work of his career. Absolutely. Like he is at the pinnacle at his age. He is the same age as me. I think he's forty-one. Um, 
He's in the best shape of his career. He's in the best. He is in heel status. He like like over the top. Like I, I cannot get enough of this version of Brian Danielson. Um, it just shows all everything that he has learned over the last twenty years. And being, I'm sorry, he is the best wrestler on the planet i like every match it's like you you're always like ah oh, kenny omega ah oh, aj style is like no i mean what he is doing right now is symphony work he is a master it is a master class and yes christopher daniels at 51 i read an interesting tidbit today that christopher daniels is the same age that rick flair was when wcw was bought by wwe so you know you comparison and rick flair went for a while after that's all like, relative it's all relative, but at the same time, it's two different, you know, generations of wrestling. Like, Ric Flair wouldn't have been able to do what Christopher Daniels is doing at 51. Mm -hmm. Was it a style of wrestling? But again, Christopher Daniels is an ROH original. That is, you know, that is what modern professional wrestling is now. And I mean, man, he looked, he looked amazing. I mean, the guy... Again, I want to be 51 and be able to do a moonsault too. I will end up hurting myself or dying because I am accident prone and I always get injured by the littlest things, so I can't do that. Maybe you'll be able but, to do the big things. <laughs> maybe, maybe at one point. I don't think anybody around me in my immediate circle will let me because I have to be wrapped in bubble wrap everywhere I go. But, you know, he's just – it was a solid match. It was a good match. It was – they were, you know, doing what they did 20 years ago and just kind of bringing it to modern day. And obviously, you know, Brian Danielson was going to go over because, you know, he has a big match on Sunday. Um, the the – the little things, like you said, the handshake at the end and him just starting to stop. And he's like, this is an ROH, this is AEW. I don't care about what just happened. He's with like, Tony yeah, Black. I don't wrestle in ROH. I wrestle in AEW. It's like when you were a little kid, like, Ma, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching yeah. you. Yeah, like, it's like he doesn't even care, like, you know, that he is one of the originals from ROH and that Tony Khan just bought it. He's like, I don't care. That That's not me anymore. I'm not that that brian danielson anymore i'm i'm brian danielson who's been a world champion in wwe and i i was the ultimate underdog and i had land wrestlemania and you will respect me because i am here now and that's not me anymore so that was beautiful and then mox coming out and mox doing his thing and i i can't tell you how excited i am to see this match this is probably the other than cm punk i'm actually more amped for this match than cm punk and mjf just because these two guys are doing the best work of their career and we never really i i feel like we didn't really see it in wwe when they were dean ambrose and daniel bryan it's not going to be the level of what it's going to be on sunday um and i'm interested to see what happens you know with brian trying to recruit these people and and instill violence into everybody what's going to happen i don't know who's going to win to be honest i have no idea who's gonna win on sunday and either with either person if mox or or brian wins i won't be surprised or i won't be disappointed i want to know what's going to happen after the the match and with the storyline of brian wanting to install violence um you know we can fantasy book i've seen you know since cesaro has uh been released or his contract expired wwe be interesting to see if brian recruits somebody himself would if he can't get anybody in AEW to turn with him um and that would be interesting i think that would be a really cool role for him because that's somebody who could instill violence so i'm more excited for the outcome but i'm excited for the match i think it's going to be the the show stealer i i absolutely 100 percent think that you know Brian Danielson is going to bring out the best in John Moxley, even though they have two different styles of wrestling. What do you think? Yeah, it's so funny. I was thinking about, again, as we do, I just, I'm like driving in traffic on the way home to work, and I'm just thinking about Brian Danielson, <laughs> you know, <laughs> casually. But like, I was, I, uh, I was thinking that I actually, while well, I was thinking about this match too, and I was, I like, watching Brian Danielson wrestle wrestlers that have a different style than mm -hmm. he does rather than like, don't get me wrong. I want an hour long. We talked about this last week. I want an hour long match, right? With, um, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm really tired. I'm forgetting his name. Uh, I'm sorry. Could you repeat yourself? The little, the, the, the new, newer guy, technical wrestler. We they had the match last week on dynamite main event. Oh, um, <laughs> 2 .0. That's, that's not Lee Moriarty. Um, Crap! I forgot too. I'm oh gonna have gosh. to Google this. <laughs> that promise isn't. I, it's like it's one of my. Uh, uh, it's oh my gosh! I'm just looking bad. Uh, Mary, look it up for me while I talk. But um, please. Yeah. But I um I I want to see that Iron Man match. Daniel Garcia. 
There it is. All right. There it is. Uh, it was, it was you, in you the back why? of my brain. It's the Daniel thing. You were getting confused because yes. they both have Daniel in it their name. It was commuting from one end to the other, as I say, just taking its time. But So I want to see that hour-long match, don't get me wrong, but like, I want to see more so Brian Danielson versus Dante Martin. Yeah. Uh, because I think that would be really fun. Uh, watching the transition from the like the moon salt into the triangle hold, like it's stuff like that that I get more excited for. Cool. I also really love watching Brian Danielson. You all know if you've ever listened to me say anything before. I love watching Brian da- Danielson wrestle big guys, because uh, you know I always go to that Brock Lesnar match, a Survivor Series. I want to see him against Miro. Like I love watching him little by little take apart a. Um, big man and and make it so like i'm suddenly feeling bad for the big man like that's weird uh that he can it's just such a talent but i can't think of a wrestler like recently and again i couldn't even think of daniel garcia's name so just put this in perspective but i can't think of a wrestler maybe you can marry that's kind of got the same style and and moxley can go moxley can be technical if he has to but i would categorize him in kind of a brawler status too mm-hmm. uh, like a, a brawler that brian danielson has wrestled Maybe in his this current run, am I missing someone? Am I missing someone? Obvious, maybe there Minoru Suzuki. There aren't. There are honestly, there aren't a lot of people like John Moxley. I mean, like his, Eddie Kingston, I'd say, but he's Eddie not. Eddie Kingston, um, yeah. I mean, that's probably the closest. I would say I John Moxley is on a different level plane. Like, and it's not like trying to blow anything up his butt. It's just what he does. Like, just his, ever since he's, he let, and he tried doing it in WWE, but, like, ever since, you know, he showed up in AEW, his, his, his evolve into this just brawler status kind of dude, um, I mean, I guess you could say, like, Kevin Owens, Kevin Steen, but even still, he's a very technical, he moves really crazy for a big guy, you would never think that Kevin Owens was a high flyer. Yeah, you do. That's what I was about to say. You would never look at Kevin Owens and think, hey, high flyer, but he is. But he also does these technical moves with, like, drivers and power bombs and stuff like that. So when when it comes to saying, like, somebody like John Moxley, like, yeah, I would, I would say Eddie Kingston is probably the closest. I mean, other than Stone Cold Steve Austin, who hasn't been wrestling for 20 years. That's who he reminds me of. You know, my brother always makes a joke and called him uh, lukewarm Dean Ambrose in 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 WWE because he is, he's kind of that same kind of thing that Austin had to do when he got injured and, and, and turned into this brawler old school wrestler who just beats the crap out of you until you submit, you know? So, cause Steve couldn't technically wrestle anymore because of his neck injury. So, but Dean Ambrose can be a technical wrestler when he wants to, he can pull things out of his arsenal, but there isn't, anybody like John Moxley and that's what makes him so special it's just he's just like I'm here I'm here to do one thing and I'm here to take name, you know kick ass and take names and I'm out and he doesn't care and he's just gonna beat you until you give up he does not care how far it has to go and that's the great thing about Brian though as much of a technical you know professor wrestler he is like a technician he also could get pretty violent if he needs to, you know, and he shows that with his head stomps and, and just just brutalizing people with his fists if he needs to put you down. So it's going to be a fantastic match. But I, don't be surprised if if Mox like pulls out stuff that you haven't seen him do in a while or never seen him do because he knows he's going in there with a with a wrestling, you know, savant. Oh, so. absolutely. He's like he's like he's like elegantly violent. Um, but then yes. I, I think the best comparison is, is going to be, I have a feeling and I hope because this was one of my favorite matches of last year and I stand by it. it it's up there, uh, was Minoru Suzuki. I was a, on a buy-in on a buy-in on YouTube. It was one of my favorite matches of last year. Uh, Brian Danielson versus Minoru Suzuki. It was just electric and Minoru Suzuki, I would say has a similar, vibe to John Moxley um and yeah. uh and so that that is what I'm hoping we that's the kind of style we get and so there's my I just proved I guess I answered my question I just proved that yeah Brian Danielson can wrestle just as well with brawlers too and and these two guys are some of the yes Brian Danielson is the greatest professional wrestler in the world right now period bar none um at least in my opinion at least in North America let me say that because I, yeah. I don't think I'm educated enough worldly to make that claim but uh there, these two guys are some of the greatest storytellers in professional wrestling right now. 
And I'm not just talking about, yes, they can both cut a promo. I actually don't think Brian Danielson is the best promo. I just think he's a great storyteller. And I didn't think this promo that John Moxley cut last night made any sense. I thought it was a little grabby and it was going for one-liners and all that other stuff. And I didn't think they needed to go for one-liners like that. You already had lines like, the only thing I'm going to be drinking is blood. And yeah. uh, and I don't need a chair to make you bleed or something like that. Like, uh, mm-hmm. There were enough lines in this show. Um, it, to the fact that I could remember it. Again, this is the person who couldn't remember Daniel Garcia's name two seconds ago. <laughs> so, um, but I uh, I don't know. So I guess we should just go into the... Um, into the uh, who do you think is gonna win, Mary? You gotta, you gotta. I'm gonna make make your pick. Man, I mean, if if you gotta put a, a gun to my head, I'm gonna say Brian Danielson. I think he's got way too much momentum right now. I think he eventually he's going to be the AEW champion, and that's not to set John back. But I don't think John. I, I don't think either of them need a title. I just. The way this storyline is going and for what they're trying to set up Brian to be doing, you know, with, like, I want to instill violence in these young kids and blah, blah, blah. If he loses, it kind of, you know, it takes the, it takes the air out of the room, right? Like, so, okay, that was for nothing. Like, nobody's going to take him seriously now because John Moxley, like, beat his ass. Um I think he gets one over. I don't think it's going to be clean. I think he's going to be sneaky, even though we rarely see Daniel Bryan use tricks to win because he doesn't need tricks to win. He's that damn good. Um, I, I, I got to go with, with Bryan, um, even though I don't want to. I really want Mox to win. I just think it makes more sense for what they're doing with with Daniel Bryan kind of being this this leader, old school guy who's trying to come in and, and help these younger kids get over and, and, and instill the, the hunger that he has still to this day. And it's not that John Moxley isn't hungry. John Moxley can go do whatever he wants. He's gonna be he's gonna be super old over. He you know, he's younger than than Bryan, you know, if you wanna be technical about it. And I just I just I just think that Brian's going to win and that's just me pulling stuff out of my butt. I honestly don't know who's going to win, but if you're going to force me, I'm going I'm going to go with Brian. Yeah, I, I think I'm in agreement with you. Um I I think I think AEW is so fun. Um cuz it lets us like go on these I don't know about you, but like I go to like okay, so if Brian Danielson wins then then what happens from here here and here? You know yeah. what? I take it back. I'm going to go cuz I have I have where I I could see this possibly going in my short-minded view, right? And again, I am I am no I do not have the capabilities that these guys have to put all these stories together. I just I can think very short term, but like um, it would be cool to have Moxley win, and then they have each other's respect and whatever else they do their little dojo thing. And the long-term story is kind of similar to what they're doing with Christian Cage and Jungle Boy, where it's a real slow burn, but you know it's gonna blow up soon. You know, or eventually, like, where it's just, like, they, they're just, like, nagging each other here and there and here and there. And, and Brian Danielson can't let it go that he lost to John Moxley. And that's, John Moxley's hilarious, right? So maybe we get a little, like, banter back and forth. Like, oh, like, you met, that time I beat you. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I, yeah. I think that that would be where my head is going with it. Though, I agree with you. Like, I don't think Brian Danielson should take another major loss. Uh, yeah. But I just I just can't see where it goes when Brian Danielson wins. That's why I think I'm going to go with John Moxley because my brain gave me a fun little story for the next year or so. Uh, no, and just I, to be... you know, like now listening to you, that does make sense. Like if if John wins, then you know that's what he wanted. He wanted respect. Um, they do they join forces. The only thing the only the only thing I see with that is that what does that mean that Brian Danielson is going to be a face now, you know, because John is kind of the anti-hero, like he's not good, but he's not bad, but you know, he's a fan favorite and, and Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson does the best work when he's a heel. Um, I would like to see a heel turn for Mox. Like maybe he goes in, like maybe he loses. No, mind, I don't think you can do you know? it now, but I don't know. So that's why I'm saying it's very iffy, but like your, 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 your situation makes much more sense than mine, but you know, maybe Brian beats him and shows him his blood and he's like, you're mine now. And you know, John, 
jumps and he starts doing this thing. But, you know, John is uh, his own animal. That doesn't mean that in two months he's going to screw him over and jump ship. Maybe he just is trying to infiltrate it and get back at him, you know, for losing. It, it could go a number of ways. And the only reason we're saying this is because AEW actually, like, completes storylines. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I'm saying. AEW burn. is so fun. You get to think about all yeah. this stuff. Yeah. So it's not like it's going to be like, oh, well, he lost and on to the next person. This is still going to drag through but what they're what they have planned i don't know so it's good that we're both on one of us will be right on sunday at least hopefully otherwise it'll get real weird it's just like (laughs) i don't know who's gonna win double dq somebody comes in and runs maybe that happens maybe somebody runs in and takes no no more dqs they use their quota they're using their (laughs) three-year quota for a while now um you had me thinking too about the idea like i'm gonna make a weird comparison here but do you remember the bar Yes. Remember how Cesaro would just be beloved and people just couldn't stand Sheamus? Yep. And and I'm romanticizing it a little bit from, from what it actually was, but what if they did something like that and you've got Brian Danielson who's just like, I don't know, okay, so they have a match versus, let's say, uh, the Varsity Blondes, right? Because I like to yeah. think about Brian Pillman. For some reason, he's just got such a kickable face for me. Um <laughs> No, no disrespect. I, I, you know, whatever. Like his but dad. It, He's it, got a kickable face, like his dad. <laughs> I, you said that, not me. I'm, I'm just Brian <laughs> Pillman Jr. Man, I just this kickable face for me. I just, I don't know if it's the Alistair Black thing. Once I've seen someone get black masked, so it's, it sits in that part in my brain where I forget names. Um, but yeah, I, I, I can see like Brian Danielson after the match just doing the same thing he did to Christopher Daniels tonight, and John Moxley just standing there like, "Come on, you, you don't need to do that." Like he's not gonna stop him, you know what I mean? But he's also like, "You're, you're overdoing it." Like just somehow making very casual of, uh, of the brutal violence that comes with Brian Danielson. So I'm, I'm excited to see. I think it's fun to play with, and we're going to talk about this with another few, too. I think it's fun to play with the gray area of dynamics. I do like a typical babyface heel kind of uh, underlying thing, but I think it's fun to, if, if you do it right, it's it's a real delicate art. And again, it, it was done masterfully later on in the show, but you can you can mess with it and, it, and it can be even more rewarding. It's high risk, high reward for sure. So Yeah. Uh, anything else before we move on to this you-know-what fest that was this Battle Royale? Yeah, um, no, that's it. I'm just, like I, I said, I'm more excited to see where it goes after the match, but either way, whoever wins, it's it's going to be, I think it's going to be the show stealer of the night. I really do. I wonder how many people are going to bleed at Revolution. I assume maybe I just this lot. match and CM Punk? Mm, I think a lot. I think there's going to be a lot of blood. All right, I'm, I'm going two and under. You can have three and above. How about that? Okay. And Well, that, that that's the real part. Like, I, see, I've been doing some sports betting. Can you tell? <laughs> just that, like, not my, that's not my game, man. I would lose so much money. I stay far away from that mm-hmm. stuff. So, just, just, just for fun, just little, <laughs> little stuff, you know. All right, this battle royale. Um, wow, this was something. I'm not, I'm not gonna even go. We're not gonna recap this. And and I would tell you, don't go back and watch the whole thing. Go watch Mac, Max Caster's rap, and um, <laughs> and listen to the pop the acclaim gets in Jacksonville. Like I, I get that 100. percent One of the bright spots of the pandemic for sure. Um, and, uh, and then watch the last, like, five minutes of the match, uh, when you get to, like, top flight, obviously, Darius Martin returned, that was a good moment, too, in the beginning, I just got chills talking about it again, god, I'm such a mark, um, <laughs> and, uh, and the la and having the Young Bucks top flight and, um, FTR were the last three teams in the Battle Royale, Mary, I'll throw it over to you first again, what, what did you, what did you think about this, did you think about the ending, um, um, it was chaos, um, as every battle royal is. It's it's a particular chaos when you have tag team battle royals. But there's, just... like, good organized chaos, and I want to make that argument because I have seen good battle – versus, like, like the Royal Rumbles this year. I'm, again, sorry to go. These are the worst Royal Rumbles yep. that I've seen in, in, in my lifetime that I can remember, right? Uh, again, the, to, to me, the product is the worst it's ever been in my lifetime as well. So I don't – maybe that plays a part into it, but just the laziness of, like mm-hmm. – like, we're not even going to pretend like we're doing something, whatever. Like, you, these definitely take, they're an art form, but like, and they take effort. But if you're going to book them to me, I say book them and, and actually pay attention to the details. And I think, um, I'm sorry, I totally like just took over here. But this was like a, a situation to me, and I suffer with AEW with this a lot. And I think we talked about it last week, too, where I really enjoy the destination, but the journey sucks. 
Yeah. Uh, I, again, I I don't have any qualms with it. It was just chaos, like, and that's how I describe any of those matches. But mm-hmm. um, you know, we could sit here all day and pick it apart. But it's it was a long bout. I think it went a little too long too. Um, it seemed like it it was too many, way too, too much. Many dorks. Yeah, and I just don't. I also don't like the like. I like when it's okay if one member of the tag team gets eliminated, the team's eliminated. I don't like oh, wh- oh both really? Have to I'm be the eliminated. opposite. Uh, I, I I don't. I it's just like well no, because it's a team thing. I again I digress. That's just my little pet peeve. But the last three teams were solid. Um, you know, good showing for top flight. I didn't think they were gonna win it, but you know, Darius, like you said, came back. Cut and dry. Yeah, you know, Darius came back, they gave him their moment, and they looked excellent. They are a phenomenal tag team. It was the first time I saw Darius uh, since I've been watching AEW regularly. I know he was out with an injury. Dante Martin is fantastic. I'm a big fan of him. Um, so that was nice for them. But, you know, you get down to Nitty Gritty, you get down to FTR and the Unbox, the two of the biggest tag teams in the whole entire you know, uh, federation. It was going to be one or the other, uh, interesting stuff. I really did think FTR was going to win for a second, but then I remembered really quickly with all this stuff going on with the Unbucks and red dragon. So it was an interesting win. Um, it, it, it sets up, you know, the storyline that we were talking about last week. What's going to happen when Kenny Omega comes back? Adam Cole has infiltrated the elite. He is slowly but surely trying to take it over and put his fans, uh, his friends in this faction. And it feels like he's trying to push these other people out while Omega is away. And, you know, just being a swerve of, the, oh, Red Dragon helped helps the Young Bucks win. It's because they want to fight them and they want to show that they're the dominant tag team. So it was good storytelling. I loved it. Um, interesting to see what happens on Sunday between uh, these teams for the titles. And, um, you know, I, I unfortunately don't th- – I, I could be, like, you know, shooting myself in the foot right now. I don't think uh, Jurassic Express – retains i i i feel like i feel like for some reason young bucks are or um red dragon are gonna win and i could be just you know they could be dragging it out longer but i feel like something's gonna happen like that so i don't know what do you think funny i i think i think the young bucks have the least chance to win i think it's which is sad because i miss the young bucks title reign i it's like we didn't know what we had what was there um uh, I think it's the title should still be on the Lucha Bros personally, but that's just me. Um, and uh, though I don't know with Alex Everhand does this a vampire now they had a lot going on, so who knows? Uh, you know, Ray Phoenix injured, so it all it all worked out the way it had to. But um, and Penta's like dark now, or so, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but I um, yeah, I thought this I thought they did a good job of <sighs> obscuring the obvious. With the fun moments, like when um, Dante Martin eliminated Cash Wheeler, and it was just uh, uh, Darius, the young bu- the young bucks, and Dax. Like they did a really good job of of making it. Like we all know the young bucks are going to win this match. Well, at least I thought so for sure, um, because of, like we talked about the story and whatever else. But um, I there was a moment where I had a hope spot, you know. Or if I didn't, I didn't take it back. I didn't have a hope spot. I I don't want to give them too much credit, but I did. They did a good job of obscuring the obvious, so I'll give them credit for that where it's due. But I, I think, I think this three-way match is going to be incredible at Revolution. But to to me, it was like, and I understand the story, and I think the story, I think we're going to look back at this battle royale, and it's actually going to be a really important part in this whole history of the Young Bucks. Like I think they're gonna, this is going to be like something that we're going to replay, we're going to go back to. Uh, but I don't. I didn't enjoy the journey. I just didn't enjoy this as like a watching experience. And I love chaos and I love triple threats, three ways. I love battle royals. I love a good Royal Rumble. I will just put a Royal Rumble. I'll put Royal Rumbles on all day long in the background. Like, I don't care if I've seen him before or all that other stuff. Though the one thing that does do it for me a little bit is knowing who's going to win. It's a good thing my memory is so awful. That's why I can keep watching these over and over again. But, um... And knowing who was going to win, I think, also kind of affected this match for me. Also, a lot of Dan Housen. I, listen, I... It's, I feel like Danhausen is on the CM Punk run. Do you see that? Like, you know how CM Punk had to come out to every town? Thank God he did, because we went to go see that live. But he had to come out to every town when he returned, right? And give the whole little spiel. I feel like Danhausen has to come out from under the ring for every single town. I think that that's happening because a lot of people don't know who Danhausen is. I mean, everybody knows who CM Punk is. Uh, I, I, CM I think it's Punk... happening for the opposite. It's funny you said. Yeah. I think it's happening because a lot of people do know who he is and like he's over. But it's just like it's every single week he comes out from another every single time. 
yeah, I just, I, I think, no offense to you, I think that's a poor comparison with CM Punk. Like, CM Punk, like, the reason why CM Punk was doing that was because he had been gone for seven years, and he was gloating in the moment. Like, that's why they were doing that. People were clamoring to see oh, him. Oh, that's he my was point. The yes, biggest yeah, yeah, that's my point. But, I think like, it's... I wouldn't, I wouldn't put Dan Housen in the same exact boat boat is CM Punk. I honestly, a lot of people, you and me might not, I only knew him from Twitter. Like, I I didn't know what Federation I didn't know he was, was yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's why that's happening every week. I don't, I, I, I'm not trying, it's just a bad comparison. Like, I don't think it's anything like that. They're doing this because people want it, and it's new, and it's interesting, and I don't think anybody knows who he is. And he's still injured. Like, he just had surgery or something like that. Yeah. So what else are they going to do with him right now? Yeah, no, I understand that. It's kind of like the doctor's office. I always throw back to the with the Britt Baker when she was injured as well. I hear you. I think I think my point is is that because it is a bad comparison, and that's why I think it's stupid. Like I think I think like it's almost like we were all so excited to see CM Punk. This is my comparison. This is my point. Is like everybody was so excited to see CM Punk that no matter what town he went to, like he would come out and do his thing because it was an individual experience for every single person in the audience. Just like maybe people, I think AEW thinks that there are people in the audience, right, who also want to have an individual experience with Danhausen. That's why every single week we get this very repetitive thing. The CM Punk thing was great. I don't like this Danhausen thing. I'm starting to get sick of it after a while. It's just like the repetitive nature of something because they travel. You know, like, uh, it's kind of like how WWE re- redoes all these matches over and over and over again. Yes, when we're watching at home on TV, it's just rematch after rematch after rematch. But if you think about it, that's what, like, house shows are. They just do rematch after rematch after rematch in different towns. Like, the Dan Housen thing is a little house showy to me, is maybe a better way to put it. Okay. I mean, yeah. Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll resolve itself, but, like... I'm excited to see you how- wrestle. I know, but we I, again. He's still recovering from a surgery, so yeah, he can't yeah, wrestle right I mean, now. Right? And and the other thing is, is that like, you know, maybe it's short term or whatever. He's only really been around for three weeks. Like, I don't know. Like, I understand what you're saying. Like every show, but like he literally is only been. It's only been like three weeks a month. It's only like four weeks. Like four shows. He hasn't been like on Rampage. He's been on Dynamite, and he's done his little bit. Everybody does a bit, you know, like. I don't know. Yeah, I guess we're gonna have to agree, to agree to disagree. It's, it hasn't bothered me. I, I think it's it's kind of funny, but it'll get you know stale, and they'll move on. And maybe when he's not injured, he will wrestle. You know, so it, it's it's something that's fun for the fans. You know, like you you need a downhouse, and when you had CM Punk bleeding like a stuck pig yeah, on absolutely. live television for the kids. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, a good you know? point. Yeah, that's my so. point. I think I would enjoy it more in a live experience rather than a watching at home experience. And I hear you 100. percent I think uh, it's funny. We all like we all have our little things. Like for me, Jim Ross's commentary 99 percent of the time bugs me. It just it drives me nuts. Most people like if you asked Matt probably who was like you know a Jim Jim Ross fanatic from what I remember like he'd probably love it. You know what I mean? We I all love have, like, it. Our own listen, thing. when you listen to Michael Cole and that's the only thing you've listened to for 10, 11 years straight, and he says the same tired ass crap. I will listen to Jim Ross every single day of the week because at least Jim Ross is original and has passion in it. And, and Adam Cole is being, and Michael Cole is being fed lines. And it's, are you kidding me? Every five seconds. Like, listen, Mary, it's boss time. Okay. So, (laughs) yeah, exactly. So, uh, again, agree to disagree. But Jim Ross is a refreshing breath of air because when something big happens, he makes it feel big, not like it's rehearsed. You know, and he has you. good people on the sides of him that fill in. Chris Jericho is amazing on commentary. We've had Punk on commentary. I really like Excalibur. Taz I think he's is my great. favorite man. And and I and I love Tony Schiavone. I always like Tony Schiavone. I don't mm-hmm. know why he got such bad rep back in the day. I I think that their commentary and Taz is good because they roll when they make mistakes and they roll and you know they make fun of each other and they say things that. You will never hear on WWE TV. It feels like raw. never. It doesn't feel overproduced. Yes. I know what you mean. Yeah, and and um and Taz has such a beautiful way of making it feel so real. Like when he describes stuff, oh, like this is why mm-hmm. that hurts like this. I'm like, oh, that sounds awful. Like that, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, or this is why you know maybe he missed like when people miss suicide dives or whatever. Like Taz always make he always oh, still got a little piece of him here. Like he just manages to make it feel so real. I, yes. I hear you about the Michael Cole thing. I um. I, uh, I'm not, for me, again, Chris Jericho for me, most of the time on commentary, it's just not my thing, but we all have, like, 
that's just like a subjective a subjective view. And you know what? Danhausen is over. So subjectively, that's my thing. But like objectively, this thing is working. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, so. so Jurassic Express and um, and uh, Red Dragon, Red Dragon are already out there, obviously helping eliminate Dax Harwood. But um, uh, Jurassic Express and it was I think Christian Cage was there too. Um, all just come out. They have a quick little face off, and then and then we get to the greatest part of the show. And honestly, honestly, Mary, I don't think I'm going out of a limb. I'd say top five, top three greatest dynamite segments ever top five greatest dynamite segments and for me this is the best thing uh, aew's ever done um so for for anybody who hasn't seen this i know we mentioned this a bunch if you haven't seen it don't listen to us talk about it go watch it but um Mm -hmm. uh there was a chris jericho promo we could talk about it afterwards because i'm already on my uh (laughs) I'm, i'm already on my cm punk thing first of all I, you and I both, I think, have a have a certain similar to how Ashley and I feel about Britt Baker. I think you and I have feel have f- similar feelings to us to CM Punk, that man in that white t shirt. <sighs> he was great. He was great. And then and then MJF in the white suit too. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, again, I don't I don't know if anybody is is as much of I'm like a nerd about attire sometimes, and and I and sometimes I also take for granted some of these little tidbits I have in my head, and I and I and I just expect anybody who's listening to know, but just like the typical thing of white attire but this is like back in the day right back before i was born right but white attire being the good guy wore white attire the bad guy wore black attire we're talking like undertaker times right mm-hmm. mjf it and it's never that way anymore and that's the good part about it like that's the fun part about it but mjf in that just pure white suit it also looks really good when you bleed and that's why you know uh cody rhodes's hair when he when he dyed his hair black for that match the dog collar match that was the only thing that were probably disappointing about that entire thing. But um, <laughs> so CM Punk comes out and cuts this unbelievable promo. And, and it, it just it's so funny what making sense will do. Just like mm-hmm. making logical sense and connecting this dot and that dot and talking about, God, he hates The Rock and, and Triple H. He's like, when a lesser man, right, called, uh, called Stone Cold and said that he took his ball and went home, like CM Punk didn't do what MJF did. CM Punk goes and he points out all the terrible things that MJF sa- has said and done about Darby Allen's uncle, but let's like never forget like re- like methany. The man said methany on national television. <laughs> Brian Pillman's was, I can't even go there anymore. Uh, and says basically calls the MJL MJ elf the MJF. That's his Halloween costume. MJF out from uh, last week. He wants the one from last week. Um, they have uh, this hug, this embrace. And then he gets kicked straight in the nuts. And then we get what you, uh, what uh, Mary was referring to uh, earlier on. We get a, a bloody that that guy. I mean, he cut he cut deep because he was. Yeah. And you he know what? And he eating. he did that purposely, I bet. You know, because he really wanted to make sure that this and this was flawless. Uh, obviously, we got the pinky ring to the face, and that's when the the he started CM Punk started bleeding and. And a bigger beat down, and then the uh, the dog collar, and just the un like I I was I was uncomfortable, but in in the way I'm supposed to be, uh, and and I say keep doing this kind of stuff AEW. That's a whole other conversation, and I'll, and I'll throw it over to you. But before I just one question: Did your TV or did you did it like cut away immediately right after that? I, I had a feeling that might have been on purpose. Um, not that I remember. I remember Punk bleeding. Like, bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. I was watching it. Well, somebody was in the room with me when I was watching it. Oh, God. They were How doing do you explain that else. to a casual they, fan? Yeah. Or not wrestling fan at all. <laughs> and like they were doing something else. Hung and by they turned a, around. A... And they turned around. And they went, holy crap. What is what? And, and explicit. What is going on here? Mm. Oh, my God. And I'm like, it's okay. It's all right. It's all fake. <laughs> Even though it's not, you know. Um. I don't know if it cut away because I, I saw all of that. I, I thought you know, it added I to the see, effect if it did. He, you know, I, I think after he got, you know, they cut away as soon as they, he hit him in the head with uh, the ring. And I think that was so punk of blade. I mean, maybe he oh, actually. Oh, no, no, no. Like, I, meant, I meant like when he was being held up by the dog collar by Sean Spears. Oh, uh, I think it did cut away. But like then you had, you know, you had to see from Darby Allen's thing and, and Sammy Guevara come out. So it was it was quick. Um, I mean, it's blacked out. It's black and white out on their YouTube now because I watched it before we got we came on today mm-hmm. um, and they blacked 
white it like they, they do in WWE because it was excessive blood. Um, but yeah, maybe they did uh, on purpose. I All I remember watching it last night and watching it today, kids were screaming in the audience. There were little kids there who were like, oh my God, my hero, you know, CM Punk, it's weird, you know, because seeing that isn't as, uh, it didn't make me uncomfortable, it wasn't as unsettling, because I've seen this done a whole bunch of times, I'm desensitized to it, but also knowing the history mm-hmm. of CM Punk, um, and the things that he's done, and the things that he's been in, and he was going kind of through that, and you know, this is obviously a callback to when he had the doll collar match with uh, Raven and ROH, um, was a bloody mess too, um, you know, and that's where he's going into his arsenal. Punk has been meticulously and purposely doing callbacks to old matches or things he has done before, paying homage to matches that have happened in the past in this run. But there are a lot of kids who have just been introduced to CM Punk in the last seven months, and they only know him as the hero that came back. You know, our Batman came back. He's a hero. And to see him in that position they were like, what is going on? You know, like, that's not supposed to happen to him. He's the good guy, you know. But me always being in, in the back of my head because I'm such a, you know, crazy, avid CM Punk, you know, fan, I'm thinking this is what's going to turn him because I'm always waiting for the turn. Um, this was done I, – I agree with you 100%. This is the best thing that I've seen. This whole run with MJF has been the best thing that I've seen on AEW television. And that's not being biased. When Punk came back, you know, he's wrestling, he's shucking and jiving, you know, he's kind of going through, new, you know, and everybody was wondering, when's his first full feud going to happen? We thought it was going to be Eddie Kingston. That kind of wrapped up really, really quick, and we've gotten in the meat of potatoes of MJF. And to be given this gift, if anybody's watching this and is this is and confused in any matter, this is, this is an art that you are watching right now. These two are pouring their heart and soul. They are backstage. They are like, okay, well, we do this. We do this. Oh, okay, we're going to do this. And I don't think it's very hard for them to come in on, you know, to meet at this level to give us this si- this level of storytelling. Everything has been executed beautifully. I mean, when that whole bit happened last week with, uh, you know, MJF and being like, I met you and pulling out the picture and, and planting the seeds of, you know, is this Frankenstein's monster? Like he punk said this week, did he create him? And at the time matches up and all this stuff, it's just been absolutely amazing to watch. And it was another stellar promo by CM Punk. And that is why he is, if not the best in the game on the mic, MJF is a close second, but this is like, this is MJF is the guy who's going to take over for CM Punk. If you're watching this, you know that this is why Punk wanted to be there. It's why Punk, you know, let him win a couple of weeks ago. You know, he was talking in his ear. You saw MJF being like, Oh my God, thank you. And you know, that's what was going on. He is setting this guy up to be him when when punk goes off and he's you know he's got the candidate and the fact that they're they're making this storyline of punk created him by leaving you know and bring in the stone cold steve austin and the picture that there is on the internet of punk and austin and it's just all full circle stuff and dude i i told you before we were texting yesterday or or this morning i told you when when mjf started pulling out the lines from ROH and started saying Punk's probably his best promo other than the pipe bomb. I mean, he has so many, but like the thing that grabbed me about CM Punk when I started watching those indie things was, you know, the greatest thing the devil ever did was make you believe he did not exist. When he pulled out that line and he said, I'm the snake, I got up from my chair and walked out of the room I was in and did a pace and a lap around and I walked back down and I sat back down and I went, this is amazing. Holy crap. And I didn't say crap. I'm trying to be conscious of cursing. I have choice words for this. It blew my mind. This is so exceptional. I haven't seen anything like this in years that I'm just salivating at everything that these guys are doing. The shirt. I said on Twitter last night, I was like, somebody buy me that shirt. My birthday is in 28 days. I need that shirt. That is first wrestling shirt that I have wanted in years. I want it. Somebody buy it for me. Might have mentioned it to the BF. I need it. 
okay? The, it, it's master class, and that is what wrestling is supposed to be. And it just, there's no, there's, there, it's seamless. There's no holes in this. And now you're just like, what's going to happen on Sunday? And that is what you want, you know? But at the same time, I'm watching this, and I'm going, if Punk loses to MJF again, and he's a bloody mess like he was today, this might trip Punk into going into the heartless bastard that he was. And, like, I can't atone for my sins. Well, I created a monster, and now I need to be the monster to beat the monster. Because I don't think this thing ends on Sunday, do you? Oh, I for- and I forgot about that part, too. I, like, didn't even mention that. Oh, my- when he said, like, I like I poured alcohol down and, like, alcoholics throw it. Or I, it's like, you yeah. know, talking about getting... Getting somebody released and all, and, and oh, Jeff just... Hardy, his Jeff Hardy feud, his, you know, his Undertaker feud. Exactly, he was, he which was, was saying... like the best Undertaker match, modern day Undertaker match. Yes, at WrestleMania. and I mean that that whole like God, you know, it's unfortunate that Paul Bearer passed away during that whole entire thing. But man, when Punk was on that stage and he was rubbing the ashes on him, I was cackling like a maniac because I was like, this is fan. Fantastic! It was amazing. Him being the smarmy former 434 day champ with Paul Heyman and just being like, I don't respect you at all. I don't care who you are. I'm going to do this really disrespectful thing to you. Punk has done probably terrible, terrible things in wrestling. I mean, you have, if you watch his career, he was talking about what he did to Jeff Hardy, you know, and he did those things. And, it, you know, the first time they, they, they held on to Jeff Hardy's addiction things, not the un- umpteen time they've done it in WWE, the classic, the original, what it works, you know, it, it, it's just, I don't have enough good things to say about it. And that's why I threw it to you. Like, it's just, you know, I don't think this ends after Sunday, I think it's not going to be as concentrated like them each and other week, but this thing is going to drag out. Like I, I think it has to because I think Punk is trying to set MJF up for a superstardom, and he already is a star, and he's he is the only modern wrestler who doesn't like break character when he's at signings. I was I was at my bar I frequent the other day. The bartender watches wrestling, showed me the video he was sent in a chat, and it was. MJF signing an autograph for a little girl and having a fight with her I and love that. and she she you know she flipped him off and and That's all incredible. this stuff and it's just like you're watching this guy and he would never and that's why oh he's going to WWE well if he's going to WWE they better keep letting him do he might be a special case because he's not going to be able to do any of this stuff if he goes to WWE he's not going he, I, people got to stop and he's not that. he's not so then again whoever, Cody Rhodes but no yeah, I, I, but I, MJ, Cody Rhodes doesn't do what MJF does so yeah, and, and, that, that makes sense you know so it's just CM Punk is making sure this dude who gets it you know you can tell that Punk's like this guy gets it it. And if I was a reason why this happened, you know, this whole story could be made up. But I think there's always the best stuff. There's a little truth to it, you know. Absolutely. Um, I think that that MJF as a kid was heartbroken when Punk walked away. I was heartbroken, That's and I was I, 32 I just, years old. I, you know. I feel like we have to say this because I, I'm gonna I'm gonna look. I just I'm sorry to cut, but like, okay, this whole idea that MJF was like a kid. Uh, let me MJF. Uh, how old is this guy? Because I think. He's older than I, he's, tw- he's like so. He's a couple years older than I am. MJF wasn't a kid when CM Punk walked away. Like, yes, he was like a te- he was a teenager because I was a teenager. Yeah. I vividly, I have a vivid memory of the, the the Royal Rumble and getting Punk getting thrown out by Kane and and mm-hmm. and uh, and the Big Show and that whole terrible experience that was those couple years, like the summer yeah. of Punk. Like I, uh, the Money in the Bank match. I remember all that stuff vividly. This thing, like, he was, like, he's, like, making this idea that he was that age. Like, even that is brilliant to me. Even, yeah. the, like, those little details. And all the way, Mary, like, MJF and all of his, uh, excuse me, CM Punk and all of his interviews, you know, who do you want to face if you go back? Who do you want to face when you go back? Who do you want to face when you return? Didn't mention MJF once. No. Nope. And if nope. the interviewer did, he moved on right away. These guys have been planning this for definitely a couple years. I, I hope there's, like, this is the crap I want documentaries on. Like, I I imagine, and in, in my lifetime, there has not, and again, you have to, my lifetime is mostly monopolized professional wrestling. WWE monopolized professional wrestling. There wasn't, you know, I didn't, I was not really, if I was alive for any part of it, it was, you know, I was a, like a, I couldn't talk. Um, I couldn't comprehend what was going on uh, of of the modern day, uh, Mo- Monday Night Wars, right? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, the only time I, I forgot to I mentioned to you, you mentioned TNA before Impact now obviously the only time I ever watched TNA uh, was. Uh, there was the around the Aces and Eight thing, and if anybody ever watched, they'd know what I'm talking about there with uh, Bully Ray and whatever else. And so maybe I watched one or two episodes or something, and then uh, I saw Hulk Hogan on my screen, and I was like 12 years old, and even I was smarter uh, <laughs> than like like modern day WWE. Like I was like, yeah, I'm not watching a, like a bigot on television. Thank you very much. Yeah. I was like 12 years old. Um, so so that that's like the most like TNA was like the only other thing I knew about. Right. Yeah. So in my lifetime, I imagine this is what it feels like for those people who yeah. have witnessed classic feuds. Like I'm talking yes. about, yes, we've had like, and don't get me wrong. Hangman page, Kenny Omega, unbelievable long term right. storytelling. Beautiful. I almost feel like, and maybe hot take, but like, I almost feel like, as wrestling fans, we've been clamoring for a long-term story for so long, like a good yeah. long-term story, that, like, literally, they could have done half of what they did, and they we still would have been, you know, so enamored with it. I think now we are spoiled AEW fans, and you're still, like, it's, a, it's probably a lot more difficult to impress the spoiled kid in the mansion than it is the kid who's, you know, doesn't nearly have as much or doesn't get as much for Christmas and all that other stuff. Like, I feel like the pro wrestling version of the spoiled kid in the mansion, and somehow you still blew my, like, blew my mind with this every yeah, single week. Yeah, I mean, j- just, just to, like, throw back, yeah, I mean, you, I, I understand that the MJF was probably, like, 17 or, like, 16 or 18 when Punk walked away, but, I mean, that picture he had, that is clearly when, when Punk was in ROH and, yeah. or he was in WWE, like, early run of oh, WWE. Oh, so you think he's I mean, referring to, like, walked away from professional wrestling? Yeah. Yeah, like, just walked away, like, from wrestling. I mean, that's what we were talking about, right? He's, he's oh, oh, he no, no, no. I meant, I meant, like, you know how when he cut his first promo, and it's not true, because he said something about 2014, but um, what I was thinking of is, like, you know, when he cut his first promo when he was back, he was like, I left professional wrestling in 2000-whatever, and I and I came back now. Like, just basically calling No, 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 up. that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking yeah. about, like, when Punk walked away in 2014. That is, yeah. it doesn't matter that... MJF was 17 years old. It still broke his heart. That yeah. was his hero. That's what I'm trying to say. So even though, like, oh, everybody's saying a kid, he was a kid. Being a teenager is a kid. I just You're picture, still a like, kid. him thinking he was, like, you know, pacifier MJF, like, little baby no, kid, like the John I, Cena the... t-shirts. Like, that's how I'm – and it makes it yeah. so brilliant to me. Like, Yeah, but, like, but that's not what I'm talking about. I mean, the picture that he pulled out that's on the shirt, that is clearly when, when Punk was either in ROH – or it was him at the beginning of his WWE run, and mm-hmm. MJF was probably about 12 years old, like 11 yeah. years old. That becomes your hero. So it doesn't matter at any age how old you are. But he was younger, and he walked away from wrestling. He was still a kid. He was still in his teens. That was still probably devastating to him. Again, I was 33 years old. It was devastating to me. He was the reason why I started watching wrestling again. And I, you know, I'd only been watching again for like three years. And I was, yeah. I was heartbroken by it. It really upset me i went to the bar the day his contract expired which was like a year or whatever after he walked out i i was i was legitimately upset because i was like if he's gone what's the future of wrestling it's this john cena crap Mm -hmm. like you know and that's what i think is at the basis of all this like he he abandoned him it was just about when he was ready to like start becoming a professional wrestler you know he was gonna be a professional wrestler so I, again, there's just so many layers to this, and and I don't, I you know, maybe they have been working on it. Maybe they've been friends. Maybe Punk has been talking to him, even though he has been back. You know, like there was reports that came out a couple years ago, uh, a couple weeks ago, or in the last month or so, that Punk was planning on coming back before the pandemic hit. He was gonna. Oh, he, he, he was, was already talks, talking to AEW, yeah. but you know, Tom, get, like like wasn't sure. I, from yeah, what but I Tony Khan and and Punk were, were conscious enough to know. He couldn't come back when there was no audience, so they waited. You know, they waited until they were able to have a live audience. So this could have been, you know, you know, you never know. We'll, we'll we'll get the full story one day. But the point is, is the reason why we're gushing over this is that you're right. You, um, how old are you? I'm sorry, I'm I'm, I'm, tw- I'm, I'm 23. Don't worry about it. Okay, you're 23. I'm I'm going to be 41 in three weeks. So I've been watching wrestling. Um, 
before you were born. Mm -hmm. This is, yes, you're right. This is stone cold rock levels. This is, and I know somebody's going to be like, this is it. I I know. Slow your, (laughs) slow your, slow your rolls, guys. All right. Anytime I try to bring up stone cold, it's like I bastardize something. I'm trying to talk in, in terms of excitement and modern day and like name something else. Okay. Cause there's, there's nothing. There's, you're right. Ham and Page Omega. There's nothing. You, you cannot pull anything out of modern day WWE to be like, oh no, this is, this is like a stone cold rock. This is, you know, you could say CM Punk and John Cena. I'll, I'll go with that. That was a very good feud in the WWE. It was like the only feud they reminded me of stone cold and the rock, but you, you don't get stuff like this that's master manipulated and they're they're throwing the history because when you're in wwe they don't like to talk about history they think that you forgot last week they don't do callbacks and that's why it's refreshing in aew they bring up everybody else what what about the attitude era mary and the beer truck and the, yeah, and, you know, it, it, but the, stuff like that, you know, that's 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 all they have on. It's like the good old days. But if you try to be like, oh, talk about AJ Styles' career in TNA and ROH on WWE television, it's like he's an international superstar. He's wrestled everywhere. They don't bring up, like, specific feuds that he had, and that's what they were doing in AEW. They don't care. You know, the fourth wall is broken. This isn't a contained unit. There are other things going on in the world that they recognize that is going on at the same time as them so the artistry that this has been going on and this is like i feel like the best feud again i haven't seen anything from early AEW days once i can i will but you're absolutely 100 percent right this is like watching a cl- you're watching a classic feud right now in real time happening and yep. i and it's not going to go to sleep this isn't going to be a one and done uh, and- i see what you did there i saw what you did yeah there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're not going to go to sleep and one and done, this is over, MJF and, and CM Punk are going to go their other ways. They might go their other separate ways, but it's always going to come back, and they're gonna. it's going to carry on as long as Punk is still wrestling, which we don't know how much longer he will be, let's be honest. He, he's getting up there. He's going to be 44, I believe, in the fall. As long as he's here, this is going to happen, and it's going to keep reverting to it. There is going to be bad blood, and there already is bad blood. Um, his blood has been all over everything. So mm. is this the pivotal point where Punk decides I got to go back to be the bastard? Because everybody's still waiting on that. Everybody, you know, face CM Punk work is great. Great promo guy. But when he's a bastard, he is the bastard. And that's why that whole snake line was super significant because he's calling him the old man now and that he can't keep up to MJF. MJF is a bigger scumbag than CM Punk. Well, if you challenge CM Punk, he's going to he's gonna prove you wrong. And he's done that throughout his career. So, again, I, uh, another podcast. Like, I could rant about this all day, but – this is compelling TV and exciting, and I don't care. The blood was perfect, and Sunday is going to be a bloody mess. So everybody strap in uh, and, and be prepared. Um, you're going to see some crap, and I hope every week we've seen Punk wrestle. It seems like he's getting his win back and his, his wrestling legs back, and you know every match seems to be a little better. I think he's kind of been playing the part of being the old man on purpose, you know. But I think I think he's just see- hitting his stride. Yeah, I think we're going to see a rejuvenated CM Punk on on Sunday, and it's not going to be that him taking a little while to get in and stuff. He's pissed right now, and you people who don't know CM Punk in his history, he is he is not a happy camper, and he and MJF just you fooled him too, and nobody fools CM Punk. He's the smartest guy in the room. That's why he's an arrogant bastard. Mm-hmm. You fooled him. You 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 just you just opened Pandora's box, and I think that Sunday is going to be crazy with this match. Yeah, I mean, and it did its job. And and you mentioned the devil line. That's one of the greatest lines I've heard in the longest. Like it just it was so it was just perfect. It was so perfect, and um, and and like I said, it just. At, at a very base level, right? And we saw a lot of this throughout the show, but this doing the best job, right? Like, I, I agree with you. And I never answered your question, and I, and I meant to say, like, that I, I think I think we're done after this match at Revolution for a little while. Um, I think, uh, I don't think anybody goes away for a little while. I think, I think, like you said, though, but I, I don't think in a weird way, in a weird, I think there will always be a metaphorical dog collar there. Until uh, MJF or, or CM Punk or is no longer with AEW, um, and and you know again it's all relative. Age is all relative. Christopher Daniels fifty one, but you have to think about CM Punk's bump. You know, bump clock is a lot less than a Christopher Daniels. You know, uh, mm-hmm. 
And it's similar to like Christian Cage looks great, like great. And 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 he only took a couple years off, but still, you you know, that's years off of bumping every single, not every single night of the week, but almost. You know, you heard about CM Punk's schedule in in, in WWE before, so I'm uh, I'm I'm you said it all, really, Mary. I'm I'm I they it, I don't mean to sound hyperbolic, but like. I hope, you know, if if my kids ever watch pro wrestling one day, like, I'm going to tell them about this. Like, that that's what I mean when I say all-timer. It's just, it's been so cool to be able to sink your teeth. Like, I think about this feud a couple times a day. Mm-hmm. For the last couple weeks, like, it comes to my head, like, once or twice throughout the entire, like, that's, that's, you either get this wrestling thing or you don't, but if you get it, and if you're listening to this podcast, you probably get it, or you're my mom. No, I'm kidding. My mom doesn't listen to this podcast. But um, <laughs> you, you, this is what we live for. And if you like the sports entertainment stuff and you like to watch, you know, Kofi Kingston and Big E against the, the other guys three weeks in a row and all this, like, if that's what you like, like, I don't mean me to sound patronizing. I, I don't even mean it that way. Like, that's cool, too. Like, everybody, different strokes for different folks. This, mm-hmm. though is for me and and, oh, yeah. uh, and I didn't even know how much I loved it because I've never been fed something so awesome yeah I mean it's it's, it's great right and this is and this is you know bottom line statement for all the naysayers when he left and all the naysayers when he came back and and you know being like, eh, hey, he's a loser, he's washed, and da 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 and, and he took his ball and he went home, you know, he touched on all of that, you know, when you're aware, you can't really, like, beat a man down. Um, this is why it was devastating when he left, and this is why it was so huge when he came back, because that man is a master at this game, and you are getting quality professional wrestling right now because of him. I mean, if it, you know, I'm sure MGF would be doing great stuff, but would it be this level? Would he would he have this dance partner? And you 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 have to respect um, Punk's appreciation and purists of the game, and he sees this in, in in MJF, and and this is why this is why everybody was upset. This is why MGF was upset when he left. You know, if that's true, if that's based in any kind of truth, you know, it's because. When you get CM Punk and you get full throttle CM Punk, you get the best kind of wrestling if you are a wrestling fan and, and like storytelling and long-term thing and, and reasoning behind why two men are in a ring and they're beating each other up. This is why. And, and there should be no argument and no naysaying about him ever again but people are finicky and they like to say things to get likes and clicks and like to talk about things that they don't actually know what they're talking about and have been force fed one kind of thing forever and just know the story of oh well CM Punk was angry because he didn't write me an event rent for me until he went home and lost in USA and then he came back and it's just like okay dude like it's over and and this right here this is why this is why everybody was so so happy that he came back and was so upset when he left i, I don't think you can get better than that yeah he drew over a million at 10 p.m. on a friday night you know that's okay. it. they haven't touched close to that ever since um and to me and i and i hear you 100% it, it's kind of like i think i as you can tell i really like analogies mary um but like it's like you know eating pizza your whole life and uh then, you know, your friend over here is eating nachos or these people are eating nachos and you say, well, nachos are disgusting because don't you know that that cheese is gross. My cheese is like mm-hmm. when you've never tried it before. How would you know? You know, if, if and, and they're two totally different things. Yeah, they're both food, right? They're both wrestling in a way we can call sports entertainment, whatever. But uh, and, and they have a lot of the same elements. Right. But this is this is two totally different brands of what's going on. And and. Um, and and to, I don't know. To me anymore, there's no comparison. There's just no comparison. It shows you how broken the system in is because this is a man who's 44, right? Like you said, imagine when he was. Right, imagine seven years ago, whatever before. Like the stories he could have been telling if they allowed him to um, do and, uh, his thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And this makes this makes everything else look, you know, like like if this was the measuring bar, everything else would be screwed. Thank God it isn't. Thank God it's so above and beyond. <laughs> But um, it, we got We we have to. We could do a whole other podcast. But let me ask you, Revolution Mayor. Again, putting you on the spot. I didn't ask you about the tag team, but it's a right. You know, it's what well, well, I, I. We got an idea. Who um, who who wins? MJF or CM Punk? Your head I really or your heart? think. I uh, I really think MJF is gonna win. 
um, just because I feel like they're going to drag this out a little longer. But I could be wrong. Again, if if it's a different punk that you get, if you get angry punk on, on Sunday, because, again, we haven't seen angry punk yet, right? He's just been happy. He's been happy to be back. He's been happy to, like, you know, see the fans and, and get back to loving professional wrestling when he, he, he hated it for so long and he's been able to do everything and everybody's been accommodating and he's the king, you know, and he's been the king. Um, if we get that punk, like, you know, he said to MJF, I want the MJF from last week. That's the MJF I want to come out. We get that punk. I, 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 I really think that MJF's going to win. I, I think MJF's probably going to win overall, but I could be completely wrong and you could get one angry MF on Sunday and he might kill him. I, I like I, I I don't know if you've ever seen the crazy look that CM Punk gets in his eyes sometimes when he's wrestling, mm-hmm. when he's a bad guy, uh, you know, and he pulls it out. I mean, it it depends how long they want to go on when his undefeated streak. I mean, he put MJF over already. You would think that he needs to get his win back, but like I don't, you know, he's Teflon. He's it, nothing's going to affect CM Punk if he wins or loses because he's putting over new stars and and people who deserve to be getting put over it's a little different with Daniel uh, Brian Danielson I think Brian needs to win um because they're building him up like the you know the next messiah but you know CM Punk kind of it, it's Teflon you know it's, he's kind of already the messiah line. yeah he's already the messiah you know he's always been a little bigger than than Daniel Bryan um or Brian Danielson so uh, I'm gonna say MJF but I would not be surprised if Punk just comes out and murders him like and honestly uh me me and, and the BF were talking about um, maybe with the whole thing that happened with Warlow after Warlow interferes and costs MJF the match because that deflection is happening sooner than later. And he just slapped him in the face right after. Oh, I that don't promo. think they, as, as much as they've did, like beautifully like intertwined that with this. And like, somehow that's been like one of the biggest talking points in a feud between like, this is like a dream feud for any pro wrestling nerd out there. And somehow they beautifully intertwine this whole Wardlow thing where like, that's some of the major talking points. I don't think they're going to touch that with a tech. Like I, I think, mm. I think you need, I think mm. a- AEW, it's, we're so, I don't know about you, Mary. Mm. I'm so, I don't know. I, I think you're looking at you're looking at this from hopeful eyes. They've been building this thing. I mean, it could not even be like Warlow like interfering with the match. Who's to say that Sean Spears doesn't try to interfere with the match and Warlow holds him back? Oh, I believe I believe something like I I just don't think like I think we're gonna get some version of a clean victory, and I really hope we do at least because I uh, I'm, I'm so WWE brainwashed where I just don't like i don't i don't think we can have nice things i don't think we can have nice things i uh, mean I, I i i see your clean argument thing but the thing with the AEW, other than like dqs and stuff like that like this is not a this is a no dq match so it's dog collar match there, there's no way there's disqualifications i'm saying interference makes complete sense in this you got to look at oh, it yeah it no, makes absolutely sense. So, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I I understand you want this to be cut and dry, but there's no way with MJF that it's going to be cut and dry. Like, that's what happened yesterday. Like, yeah, I mean, you could see, like, I mean, maybe what happens is, is that, you know, Warlow or Spears and FTR try to interfere and Darby Allen, Sting, and and Guevara take them out backstage and they never get involved in the match. That I can can mess with. That could happen, but you can't. You, you, you don't. You saying you don't think it's gonna happen? I, I mean, uh, my child. Like it's, it's definitely a possibility. It is one hundred percent a possibility that Sean Spears tries to interfere with the match to help MJF win, and Warlow holds him back. There is a possibility that Warlow just gets pissed off and and takes MJF out and and helps CM Punk because of what he did to CM Punk weeks ago with the power with the power bombs, and you saw the whole time that Warlow did not want to do that and that he respected CM Punk and he was forced to do it. So you got to put that in as a factor in this match. And that's why I'm saying that I don't think that this is going to be like, okay, they're done. They're going to go their separate ways on to the next feud. I, I do believe that's coming, but I don't think it's Sunday. I, I think this is going to be a little longer. So no, I hear you 100%. No, no, I believe. And I think, I think that's that I agree. I just, I don't think it's going to define the finish. Of the match, if that makes sense. I definitely think okay. you're right. 
Like, and, and I, and you know what, the Wardlow thing, is you book that, that's, like, I love that booking of Sean mm-hmm. Spears holding him back, or, or, I mean, of him holding Sean Spears back, or him just, that turn, uh, the Wardlow turn happening there, I mean, we did get a red hearing, we're not even gonna have time to talk about it, because we still have so much to cover here, but, uh, of, of the backstage segment, um, you know, where he got slapped and talked about, like, I feed your family, yeah. all this other stuff, yeah. um, but, uh, I, I think, I'm, at least I'm hopeful that the finish is gonna be, between CM Punk and, and MJF. I think they're going to try to make the finish other stuff, but I hope that the actual ending of the match... It, and, and people forget, too, right? Like, Because MJF is so amazing on the mic, the guy can wrestle. I, yes, he can. He, the, he had the best match on the pay-per-view last... At Full Gear. I think he's going to have the best match on the pay-per-view this uh, this pay-per-view as well. Uh, I think they had a classic... Uh, like, 40 minutes they went um, on, uh, technically, on, uh, on Dynamite... And you know what? I'm with you, Mary. I I think you've almost convinced me to want to go with CM Punk and the whole Wardlow thing. But you know what? I think I'm going with MJF as well because I'm booking that MJF is going to be Hangman Page's next challenger, and I think he's going to take the title off him. Mm-hmm. I think it's time. I don't want to lo- – as much as I love Hangman, and he looks good with the title and everything like that, I, I like – I I think I think a short title reign is due for the world championship, and this hasn't been super short, but like a good two, like a good memorable defense, memorable defense against Adam Cole, and uh, and a and a crazy match with Lance Archer. Maybe you get one or two things in between as well, but uh, and then really, then we get back to the whole chase of it, and then you can create this whole awesome feud between probably the best baby like the best pure AEW baby face and the best pure AEW heel hangman page and, and and MJF like you can build that up for years these two guys are still so young so um that goes into a little bit later some stuff we're gonna talk about later on but yeah I'm, I'm going with MJF and I think uh I'm putting a little side note on that that we're going into uh into a title picture not too long ago from here maybe even into a TNT title picture though yeah, I think it's too soon for MJF to be a world champ. I'm, I'm going to have to disagree with you about that. I, okay. I see him being TBS or TNT champ. Or not TBS. TBS. Can you imagine MJF versus yeah, Jay yeah, Cargill? I, I wouldn't be surprised he if he pulled that streak. out. <laughs> That's something MJF would do, beat a woman for a title. Exactly. <laughs> so, she would um, beat him, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he could take on Jade. he totally take Jade out, right? Anyway, I digress. Um, no, I, I see TNT. Now I want to see it, Mary. God Mm. Uh, let, let's write them. Let's tweet at them. I, I'm sure one of them will answer us. But uh, no, I, I definitely see like a TNT title. I do not see MJF getting the world championship um, anytime soon. I still think while you're right, he's a good wrestler. Um, I think his star is rising and I still think he needs to work a little bit. And I do not think Ham- Hangman Page is the guy. I think when MJF was a title, he needs a, a different guy to beat i like hangman page it's nothing against him it just it doesn't make sense like it just i don't see where they would get there he's not like hangman page is great he's a classic old school style territory wrestler it just doesn't fit with the how mjf is um i do agree with you that i think hangman page is gonna have a short title run i do not see this being a long-term thing for him. I don't think Adam Cole is, you know, I know we're going to get into that later. I was going to say, wait, think save it, Adam, save it, Mary. We got but, ad breaks in between here. Let's get but, to that. Yeah, you know, I think the next person that probably is going to go, who would take the title off a of hangman, is going to be Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson. I think that is the clear person that's going to get the title next and i just that's why i think he's going to win i think that's why they're going with this thing and i that's why i think the storyline is long because they are building brian to be the next champ when that's going to happen i don't know we could both be ron and hangman page could be champ until omega comes back and you know then they have a title match there you know but i i really don't think that i think it's too soon still for mjf i think he gets you know a tnt title run under him and and he and he runs his mouth and he has a really really good long run with that and he gets screwed in some way and he loses it or whatever he loses it naturally to a you know a good baby face but i still think that we're still way too premature for him to be going after to be the next opponent and to be taking that title off of page like soon like you know maybe if you're saying like six months down the line then okay yeah if hangman's still champ which i don't see i agree with you in that that aspect but uh, i i really don't think that that he's gonna be champ anytime soon I, I i think he'll have a tnt run first um and i think he'll be a complete and utter you know 
dick about it like he is, but I don't see that being the guy that he takes the title off of. When when MGF wins the AEW chair, it's going to be huge, and it's going to be somebody that I think is a bigger star than H- Hangman Page, in my opinion, or a different kind of champ. Okay, well, good. I, the, the, you know what? I love disagreeing, Mary, because then we, we, we represent more than one, you know. Yep. View. Uh, view exactly, and 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 I uh, and I'm excited to just see what the heck happens and what's next, and, and and obviously there's still the whole Wardlow thing going on. Before we move on to the next, uh, we can't go long on this, but I'm going to ask you it anyways. Besides Britt Baker, who already won a world title, and she is the fifth pillar, if not the first pillar, you know. But uh, but out of the other the other pillars, those other four guys, you know, um, who do you think is going to be the first world champion out of them? For, for, I'm sorry, of what? The four of pillars. The... We got Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, MJF, um, and oh my god, my head. I'm, I swear, I must have hit my head today or something because <laughs> I can't remember anything, man. Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, MJF, and Jungle Boy. No, it's it's Cody Rhodes, but Cody Rhodes is gone, right? Is it no, Cody no, Rhodes? the four pillars. The four pillars of AEW. No, I know. I thought it was Cody Rhodes. I'm, I'm being dead serious. I thought that was that he was one of the four pillars. Oh God, no, no. It's it's Jungle Boy. Uh, it, it, it's because it's all these young guys: Darby Allen, okay. Jungle Boy, MJF, and Sammy Guevara. It's it's kind of like what they're building. The idea, of the pillars, right? What they're building AEW around is these four mm-hmm. young talents, right? And and you know, most of them have already held the TNT title. In fact, mm-hmm. MJF is technically the only guy who has not held the title. Him. Yeah, that's why I was saying he's got to get the TNT title first before he gets the the. That's how it should be. That's in my opinion. So I feel who like um he who's hold. the first world champion out of them for? I, I it's either MJF and the last. Or, or Darby Allen. I I I I I love Darby Allen. Um. I'm always saying it wouldn't be him because of his size, but that's like a really, really stupid thing for me to that's say. That's a WWE like, brain thing. Yeah, it's a brain thing. Um, I shouldn't say that. I I was saying this yesterday when I was watching. I love Sting and Darby Allen together, and I hope there is never a breakup. I think it's perfect. It's classic. Um, I've always been a Sting fan, even from back in the day when he was in WCW, when I watched it with my dad. I've always, 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 always loved Sting. Um, so I love that coupling. I hope it never ends. I hope Darby never, you know, kicks him to the curb. Um, and I think that gives him a little more oomph to be a world champ because he has a world champ behind him um, who's guiding him through this whole thing. And he's just his own person. He doesn't really need Sting, but he, he respects him enough that he has him around. So it's either one of the two. I would go with MJF first, but he hasn't held the TNT championship yet. So I think until MJF gets that title, um, he's not going to be champ. So I, I I would go with MJF, but I'm gonna I'm gonna lean Darby just just a little bit. I I don't see Sammy Guevara as a as a world champion. I know that sounds terrible. I love him, but there's something about him that irks me, and I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. I think he's better as a heel. I get it, but there's also he does such a good job at fighting from underneath. No, I hear you. I, I think for me, Darby Allen, and I've said it on this show too. It's it's sometimes it's hard for me to subjectively like just separate the. Uh, uh, if you've ever heard me here talk about Jay Lethal, right? It's hard, it could be hard for me to separate some of the stuff that we've heard in in, in like I don't real even life. I don't even it's not even that. Like, and I try to remove myself from all that stuff. And I oh know no, exactly no, absolutely what you're talking no. About. Yeah, Darby it's Allen not is that. Incredibly talented, objectively. But I would always yeah. just say he's just not for me. He's just not really yeah. for me. But like the the man has the greatest suicide dive in in yes. all of professional wrestling, yeah. and and yeah. and he's absolutely crazy. I think I think he definitely holds the world title at some point. I I say. I think it's MJF, and then if not MJF, next is, I think, Jungle Boy. I think it's years down the line, but I think you have one of the greatest potential baby faces ever in Jungle Boy. I, I, yeah. I know it doesn't seem like it yet, but just – just it's wait. just it's, it's so far away though. Like I could not believe him to be a champ. Like I can believe him as tag team champ, absolutely. But it's so far away. It's like so so far away. I do not. I like him. He needs to work a little bit on. You know, that's a big role to fill when you're world champ. You got to be able to carry. You know, and I just don't. I'm not saying he won't ever be. It's the same thing with Guevara. I just, I, I don't think Guevara, like, I just don't know. I don't see them as world champions. Not now, at least. But out of the four, you know, I would go MJF or Darby Allen. I think Darby Allen could totally carry that that championship. It's just like, a, that belt is really big. And ever I keep thinking about Adam Cole <laughs> holding it. And it looks like it's giant. And maybe that's why I'm like, ah, it just looks like it would be weird on him. I felt very, the same very way it's, opposite yeah, of Nyla Rose and the woman's title. Yeah, it's like this, you know, it's like the old WCW, NWA gold title. It's a big, 
big I belt, belt, belt. You know, love, that belt. love it, but it's a big belt like the, the I, I AEW, don't like the AEW championship. Belt. It's huge. It's kind of gaudy, but it's huge. So, I mean, honestly, if you wanted to go five, I think Britt Baker might be the, you know, first world champion. Out of, I know she's the women's world champ, but I think she could carry if they decided to ever go that route, which, you know, you see more and more of women challenging men again. And I think that's a cool thing. Britt Baker would be an awesome AEW world champion. Listen, just, just listen Mary, you are going to get no arguments from, like, the <laughs> number one fan here, right? Like, absolutely. I'm with that. I think J- give Jamie Hayter the freaking team. TNT title too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like I just think that give Br- Rebel Br- the care. tag team, both of them. Give Rebel yeah. both uh, the team Rebel, titles. Rebel, Rebel is really bad wrestler. I know I that's like the her. thing. But you know what? <laughs> Sammy Guevara can carry around two titles. Why can't Rebel? Um, <laughs> for no reason. Uh, well, that's um, the perfect transition because we got we got to keep going with this. But um, and we don't have a lot of time to talk about the match. I, I didn't think the match was anything much. Uh, big news: Thunder Rosa got a pin over Britt Baker on you know on television, but um. Not that you would pin her anywhere else. I don't know why I said it like that. But, like, um, <laughs> but I guess that's the big news coming out of this. You know, as wonderful as I think Mercedes. This just, the, the, we have been, as AEW fans, I've said it before, and I won't go on the soapbox about it because we don't have the time. We've been trained not to care about the women's division. In AEW, just the third hour stuff, the little, like, we have been trained to, to look at this as a separate entity in AEW rather than just because they're a different gender. It's it is and you can hear the crowd is dead silent throughout most of the match. The only pop you really hear is is for Thunder Rose's entrance. And you know, Britt Baker's over. Uh and she didn't sound over agree. last night. So um I think this is gonna over not even over deliver, but I think this is gonna be I think this I think this pot- has potential to steal the show at the pay per view, Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa. Um, so real quick thoughts on the match itself and, and, and where do you think it's going to, what do you think it's going to give me your predictions for a revolution? Um, I thought it was a good match. It was solid match. Uh, you know, I, I, I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, it was a fun match. Um, I love Mercedes Martinez. I'm a huge fan of me her. Too. I'm super happy that she is in AEW because she was just, I think she's going to be so helpful for, for specifically somebody like a Jamie Hayter. Yeah, yeah. She's she's great. I like the pairing of her and Thunder Rosa. I like Thunder Rosa. I am a Britt Baker fan. Um, I think she's had an incredible run. I get what you're saying about the training. I, I, I don't think it's necessarily just the AEW. I mean, it's, you know, the WWE had the Women's Revolution, and now it's like they're back to having two-minute matches and sloppy matches, too. So it's just kind of like this thing that's been disregarded with women's wrestling, um, trying to catch lightning in a bottle, blah, blah, blah. It bleeds into other things. People don't, like – haven't invested enough. I also think that the women's roster is kind of, uh, I mean, I know they have a lot of people, but it green. feels small, small and green. Like it doesn't feel like they have as many people as WWE have or veterans that WWE has, but you know, WWE has veterans and they, they piss all their, their options away and give everything to Charlotte Flair. So I digress, Listen, you know, the greatest in the world, man, the greatest in I the mean, world. I mean, I love Charlotte Flair. I think she's an exceptional wrestler, but like I'm, I'm, they've, they've beaten her and shoved her down my throat so much that I don't like her anymore like so John that's Cena, but blonde. yeah yeah you know that's how I felt now John Cena comes back and I'm like yay John Cena but it, yeah it's the same thing they did with John Cena it's the same thing they were doing with Roman Reigns I digress anyway besides the fact um it was a fun match it was quick you know it, it was it was it, it served its purpose I you know it's surprising that Thunder Rosa got the pin because usually that means they're not going to win on Sunday. So that's how I took it, that okay. point retains. But I honestly, then I was talking about it with somebody and I was thinking about it and I was like, uh, I kind of think her reign is over. I think they need to give the belt to somebody else. And I think Thunder Rosa is a good, she's super popular, she's super over. I can't think of anybody else who's ready to take that role. And that's why I kind of like hesitate saying that because I think, Britt Baker is doing a really good job, and I like that she's super dominant and stuff like that. But she's been champ for a while. You need to, you know, build new people, and I think there are more options with, you know, Thunder Rosa because Britt Baker has kind of burned through everybody. Thunder Rosa hasn't, um, so it creates new stuff, and, and Britt being pissed off and going for the chase and going after, you know, the title would be fun, too, because, you know, if she loses, it's going to be a war path. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I, that's who I think Thunder Rosa is going to win on Sunday. I didn't at first. I kind of think it makes sense, but I don't know who else would take, you know, I thought Ruby Soho was going to beat Britt Baker. Oh, and I was that's wrong. been such a disappointment, man. 
Yeah, and, and they ha- she hasn't been on TV, but I feel like if they put the title on a new person, it rejuvenates people, and they can now be like, all right, well, you're new, and I, I know I can beat you, and I'm going to get that title. You know, So I'm not saying Thunder Rose is going to be a paper champ or a transitional champ, but I, I think that Brit's reign of terror is coming to an end, and it might be Sunday. So I'm going to go with Thunder Rosa, even though I think that if she doesn't lose, I won't be surprised, and I won't be disappointed either. Yeah, I hear you, and and I think um, it, it just to to Ruby So I think Ruby So has got to become a better wrestler, and then because she's got the star power, she just like you think about she and I've said this on this podcast before, she is the common factor in all of those matches that just yeah. were duds. That the final to the TBS tournament was disgusting. It was like a it was a it was a bad match, like really mm. bad. I was there. I don't think it was a bad match. Oh, you know what? The, the experience live can be different, too. You can definitely see a lot different stuff on TV. I, I don't know if that's... Because I, you know, everything at Grand Slam was incredible to me. And there were definitely lulls in the show for some people. From, you know, Dark, uh, Dynamite, and then Two Hours of Rampage. But, like, for me, I, I couldn't... There was nothing to complain about the entire show. I don't know if you have the same experience when you go to a live show. But I'm I'm just, like... No, I definitely, I've been to bad wrestling shows. I've been, I've been mm. to Raw's. So I, 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 you know, I, I just, I, I I'm going to disagree with you. And I think Ruby Soho is a solid wrestler. I think that she hasn't found a good partner yet. Um, okay. and I think that matter matters for everything. And, um, you know, the, the tournament when it was, you know, it w- was, it wasn't Ruby in the finals. It was Jade and Thunder, wasn't it? No, that remember that was the semifinals because that's when we got the debut. Yeah, I'm getting myself in. I'm, I'm getting. I'm getting confused. That okay, match so was you, great. Thunder Rosa you know, versus but, Jade, uh, uh, Jade Cargill. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. So here and here's the other thing. Like Jade's super green, you know, and she's just starting to get her footing with stuff, you know. So it's it's kind of hard when you're when you're working with somebody that like isn't as you know. Again, I I think a lot goes into chemistry, and maybe you're viewing the matches coming off bad because she hasn't found a good dance partner yet. I mean, I've I've been a fan of Ruby since she was in WWE, and I, you know, I I think she's a solid technical wrestler. She pulls out some stuff, and I like her look, and she is a star. But you know. It's you have a division that's very young, too. You know, there are a lot of young new girls that, again, they don't have the 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 well of depth that WWE has with like people being there while. And now you got Mercedes Martinez, Mercedes Martinez coming in, who's going to help the girls. And you have um, Serena Deeb, who's doing, you know, a phenomenal job. And like, honestly, if, if Brit if Brit retains on Sunday, that should be the person who takes the title off of Brit. It should be Serena Deeb because she is just plowing through girls. Listen, Mary, you know? I'm not. I'm not even going to argue about the Ruby Soho because I I agree with that point so much. Yes. I am. I am. I always Deeb M D dude or D M D man is yeah. like the next tattoo. Put it on my forehead. These two women, yeah. I like. I just am. am I'm, I'm living for it. And I and I'm and I really hope they put these little five minute challenges on Dynamite as well. Otherwise, yeah. it's just going to feel like a weird Rampage thing and. Rampage is slowly but surely with all these people only appearing on Rampage, like I.E. Hook, you know, Adam Cole for that long period of time. It's really feeling like, like, I don't know, late to 2010 SmackDown, you know what I mean? I mean, you got to look at it the way I'm looking at it because it's an hour show. It's like a Sunday night heat. And that's before your time. Like when they had Sunday night heat during, you know, the late 90s and yeah. the early 2000s, um, it's where the younger talent get their footing. It's not a SmackDown because the SmackDown and Raw is like, you know, they were just putting people on SmackDown because they weren't big enough to be on Raw. Those are major shows. I, I understand where you're saying only these people are appearing there it's because like that's their like secondary show and dynamite is you know serena deep is not secondary you know it's true but she's going through new people right these are people that are getting their first appearances on tv their their school that is why she's there she's teaching these girls so i get what you're saying but you got you gotta you gotta flip the coin a little bit and think about why they have serena deeb doing the five minute challenge on the show with all the rookies and going through people it's the same thing with hook like he's a huge star but he's plowing through people but it's so he can get you know that momentum behind him they're they're still figuring out dynamite's still a very new show too you know like expecting immediate results you know i I don't think dynamite's a bad show i like the fact that it's an hour dude i can get wrestling out that you know like oh no i love the hour yeah 100 percent. so i just 
give it a little more time. But yeah, we need to move on because we have been talking for a while. And like I said, I, I'm calling Thunder Rosa on Sunday. Yeah, I'm, I'm going. I'm going Britt Baker just because I'm going with the heart. But no, I 100% agree with you. That's a good point, and I didn't think about it that way. And I and I'm living for it. I'm excited for Friday night. Oh, by the way, that reminds us, we are recording this obviously before Friday night. So if mm-hmm. you know something happens on Friday night and Hook becomes the AEW World Champion, <laughs> like we we, it's, we can't be we can't be faulted. Um, all right, we had some weird cryptic stuff from. Um, we're not gonna get into the House of Black, except why were they not in the. I'm not. I'm not even going there. Oh, because they don't care about titles. They just care about making a statement. Like I, WWE. I, I honestly, I honestly believe though that this is Alistair, Mal- Malachi Black. Alistair Black. Malachi Black is just building his brand right now. He and, I, is and I'm with people. It, they got to explain it somehow. They will, but like they're. <laughs> I mean, in the moment, like, why would these guys not want to be in a tag team title like Battle Royale? And and you have. Uh, don't get me wrong. I I live for pretty Peter Avalon, but like you put Ryan Nemeth and Peter Avalon in, and you're not going to put the like in in kayfabe world, right? It makes no sense. We in get, in kayfabe world, it kind of does make sense. They don't need to be in a battle royal to get the titles. They're going to go right after their titles after Sunday. You don't know if that's going to happen. Why do they need to do that? They they're don't not need, even they're... in the rankings. Eh, you don't know. You don't know what they have lined up. And that group, that tag team, House of Black, and, you know, whatever the the two of them collectively, Brody King and Malachi Black, are calling themselves the tag team, they just got a new member of their house. They're doing the showmanship. This is the showmanship. This is long-term storytelling. You know, it's a mysterious figure. It's a goth figure. I understand people are like, oh, there's got to be an explanation. My brother the other night was like, he's doing a Wyatt thing. This is what they did. Did anybody ever ask for an explanation from The Undertaker? Anybody? 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 Anybody ever ask why he could like summon lightning, or his brother could do fire and and stuff like that? Why he was like, crucifying people? A nine year old Mimi did. Yeah. Okay. But you know. But, but I, I'm but, I'm a little but different than never normal been nine an year old. There's never been an explanation for the Undertaker. We've just taken it as as what it is. But you know, I would there say are different people in the world. That's what they're doing. They're building. I understand they were like, why weren't they in the Battle Royal? It's for a tag team shop. Blah, 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 blah. Maybe they're not there yet. Maybe they're waiting. Maybe they're going to book them in a storyline with these people after the new tag team champs or whoever comes out of Sunday. And they're just going to try to like start you know, killing teams and just work their way up the rankings. They've had a tag team match. They had a tag team match a couple weeks ago. They won one already. Like, it's just like, I'm not trying to cut you off. I just feel like you're expecting way more immediate stuff to happen than, like, just letting it play out. No, 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 I don't, I didn't want them to win. I didn't, I don't even want them in the Battle Royal. I don't, I, like, it makes sense to me why they wouldn't be, and I hear what you're saying totally storyline-wise. Yeah, I want the slow build. Like, I, and I actually, I didn't, I didn't mind this one. I think Buddy Murphy, like, I think I'm on a, more in the minority of, I like Buddy Murphy in the House of Black. I actually really like House of Black. I like the weird goth stuff. As long as it doesn't get supernatural, I'm down for it. Um, yeah. my whole thing in, uh, in, in my sub, like the, the point from my understanding of AEW was really like, they wanted to be more like a sports simulated thing, which meant like rankings were going to matter. Wins and loss actually matter. Like things were going to make sense in a way mm-hmm. that like in, in WWE, it didn't like the undertaker didn't make sense, right? They weren't going to have, and, and Tony Khan always talks about that the broken Matt Hardy character was like his biggest regret, like, uh, that they let that happen. But again, it was a pandemic. They were trying stuff out. Like it doesn't, you know, yeah. Um, I don't hold that against him or whatever. I hear you, and I agree. I think it was the right decision not to put them in the Battle Royale. I want to see them, you know, six months down the line, maybe. That's when we approach this. But as a, if I'm, as a watching experience, if I'm supposed to believe that this is like a sports simulated thing, I need an explanation as to why the new up-and-coming dominant tag team isn't in the tag team, war- like Battle Royale or whatever, but Ryan Nemeth and Peter Avalon are, who I haven't seen in like a year mm-hmm. on Dynamite. Yeah. That's all. Like, I, but I totally hear what you're saying, and I and I'm living like again. I'm living for the um, House of Black. I think, I think, like I said, I, I think I'm actually in the minority. I think a lot of people um, who are AEW fans more like this isn't normally for them. Yeah, no, I I think it's great, and I think there are going to be more members, and I think there'll be surprises along the way, and I think that honestly they weren't in. Like, I don't I don't think they were going to win, but like if you put them in the battle royal, I think they probably should have won because yeah, they're big guys and they strike and they beat the crap out of everybody. So I just feel like the reason why they weren't in there because there's going to be another reveal or there's going to be more advancement with their storyline on Sunday. It is a pay per view. Do not be surprised if somebody else shows up out of nowhere. And like you know, we've been talking about. 
about all these people that are, you know, free agents right now and being released and every, every week, you know, and now they just acquired ROH. So like you have all this stuff going on and blah, 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 blah. And every week they're talking about, you know, Tony's con has got a big announcement. Um, you know, we had Keith Lee come out. We, we've had Jay Lethal come out. We've had all these people like kind of like right now, other than the announcement of ROH, like, there's no like talk about somebody showing up, so maybe they're keeping it under wraps, and maybe we get a new member of the House of Black because it feels like he's building a faction right now. It's not going to just be three members. I this yeah. is not done, but you know I I know you're feeling Buddy Murphy. I gotta let it play out. His promo, his part in that 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 little vignette uh, last night was great. Um, so I'm all more on board. I thought it was going to not be him. I thought that was, he wasn't a right fit, but I could be eating cake in two weeks and who knows? It makes sense with the striking and, 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 you know, I haven't seen enough of Buddy Murphy because he was, you know, in a thing with Rey Mysterio's daughter. For don't, all don't the time even get, don't even go there. Yeah. So Man. I can't, I can't say that it's not going to work out. Show. Yes, but so I can't say what it's not. Maybe it's going to be a right fit. But I mm. do feel that like I said, and I've been saying this, there is, you know, Bray Wyatt is floating out there, and and um, who's the other person that I mentioned last week that I thought would make more sense? Karrion Cross is floating out there, dude, and I think it would be a missed opportunity to bring one of those guys into the faction because it would make sense. So. But this is Mary's conspiracy theory corner. This is what I do. I could be completely wrong. I could just be random people like Buddy Murphy, who's not into that like scene tattoo goth thing at all, and is now in a faction with a bunch of like metal dudes. I don't know, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So yeah, I think it weirdly works. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? Well, we'll move on to the main event. Um, and then we gotta jump over to uh, a couple other things we didn't cover and some pre-show stuff and just some fast predictions. But um. You know, this was this was a uh, AEW six man tag match. They they are normally you know good to great, and and this I don't think was anything different. I, I don't I don't think it was it didn't set itself apart from anything for me at yeah. least. Um, but uh, and then the ending, I thought was really um, was cool and different with the you know to me I always like I can't be- I don't believe in duct tape like that, but whatever like that you're sitting there for hours. Anyways, I'm not even gonna go there. Um, but like. Uh, the idea that I like that they attacked uh, Johnny Hungy, John Silver, rather, because I thought if they did another beatdown angle on the same show, I, especially how bloody CM Punk was. Yeah, that's what I was saying, too. I agree. It wouldn't have worked, right? That super kick looked brutal. He sold that mm-hmm. perfectly, the way he bounced all the ropes like that. But, like, um, I think the real story of this whole thing was the after the match. Um, uh, and before we give our uh, our main event predictions, I guess, any, um, any thoughts on, on the post-match and the actual six-man itself? Um, it was a good match, like you said. It, it, it's standard. It wasn't disappointing. Uh, a couple fun spots in there, um, you know, especially with like Cole. I think it was Cole missing um, the buckshot and him slithering out of the ring. I think that happened at one point. I mm-hmm. could be mistaken, but I think that happened. Um, yeah, with the duct tape thing, I was like screaming at Tima, like, you can't do that now. We just had Punk bleeding like a pig. No yeah. more torturing with the ropes. But they played it nice, beat down his teammate in front of him, can't get to him. You know, that always works. Um, you know, it's vindictive. Um, I, you know, everything that Adam Cole and 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 the elite or uh, the Bullet Club or whatever is going on with this group has been great. It's compelling. It's interesting. You want to watch. You want to see what happens. Adam Cole is a natural, smarmy, cocky heel. Um, it works and. It's a good. It's been good. I've liked the storyline. It's been short, but you know, it, it works. Everything's fine. I don't have any complaints about it. As far as Sunday goes, I mean, I love Adam Cole, but it's I I don't I don't see him winning the championship on Sunday, unless something crazy happens and there's interference, which we are not hoping for. But I think there's going to be more drama with the Young Bucks and Red Dragon that is going to be the focal point for Adam Page and. Adam Cole and I think Adam Page wins you know I think that there's going to be some going on between the two of those guys outside and Cole's going to get distracted by it and somehow it's going to cost him the match and that's that's how I feel like it's going to play out I think it's going to be clean I don't think there's going to be shenanigans but I think that the the disarray that's happening between the Young Bucks and Red Dragon right now and this is highly likely going to be after that three-way tag team match something's going to happen that's going to you know, throw Adam Cole off and that's how he's going to lose because Adam Cole is super hot right now. I also, you know, think he's on a winning streak, but I don't think a loss is going to hurt him. Yeah. I, I, I saw a lot of people talking about the orange Cassidy thing. I, I actually liked that loss. I thought it was, I thought it was, it was, it didn't affect much. Um, and yeah, it, 
But uh, I'm with you. I think Hangman Page wins this, and, and I'm excited for the match. I, I'm a little worried that the that this is going to be underwhelming uh, because I have a feel. If I were AEW, and I know they usually make the world title the main event, I'd put CM Punk and MJF as the main event. I think you. I mean, I like honestly, dude. I think that might be the main event. I I think like I think they're the not right going to do. Tra- yeah, it's it's the right decision. I know they do traditional booking as it should be, you know. But for all the years that like also not to like throw it back, but for all the years that CM Punk was champ and he was second to last and not the main event because John Cena was there and John Cena was always in the main event, even when he didn't have the title. I I think it would be very fitting for Punk to not have a title match and be the main event. Like, it just kind of makes sense. The irony of it, um, the background story of him leaving WWE because of all these reasons, you know, and now we have this this feud going on between MJF and CM Punk, which didn't happen in WWE, but it kind of started, you know, it was birthed out of that, right? So it kind of makes sense, and I think that's the most hyped match. I mean, I'm hyped for for Moxley and Bryan a little more, but I don't think that's main, like, main event. Like, this is, you got a gimmick match, it's a dog collar match like let's let's go this is gonna this is gonna take a while you know to get through and i think you might be burnt out like you said to get to the world championship match after that and moxley and brian i think the the crowd might be like whew, you know but if you have these matches before and then you you close with that the the crowd's gonna be on their feet the whole time because you know they're gonna end up in the arena you know they're gonna be walking around and it'll be a fun match so i think you might get your wish i think for this this is a special reasoning for it i think it might be the main event on sunday i'm a little nervous we're gonna get an adam cole nxt saga match as well and i just don't think you could do a 40 minute main event after such a card like this i just don't think it's gonna work yeah but um yeah i mean so that's the hope at least and um and uh, we'll we'll move over to the pre-show a couple other things we didn't cover as we went through this we'll cover um some of the matches like the ladder match and a few other things pre-show we have chris statlander versus layla hirsch uh I'll take this one first. Of uh, you know, I'm rooting for Layla Hirsch because freaking Chris Statlander called out Layla Hirsch's parents for it giving her up as a child. <laughs> it, like, it was terrible. What the man. Heck? I, I I rewind. I like had to rewind. I was like, did I just hear that correctly? And I'm I'm all for Chris Statlander. I actually think Chris Statlander is one of the better women in the ring. Like I I, I yes. can't like she I seems to she is the common factor for me. Like, the one Ruby Soho match I really liked, you know, I know we have differing views on her, but, like, was the, her match against Chris Statlander. So, uh, but, you know what, I'm, I think Layla Hirsch is kind of the baby face here. Yeah, I mean, after that, that was, that was shocking. I was like, did she just really say that? Because you also wouldn't figure it coming out of that girl's mouth. She seems like a genuinely, like, nice person who wouldn't take, like, a dig like that. Like, yeah. Just like, oh, we're wrestling and I'm going to beat you. Um, I don't know. I, I I think that they're trying to build heels also in the division. I, I, you know, so Layla Hurst is, you know, Spitfire, stocky little crazy person from New Jersey. And um, I'm always rooting for hometown girls. Mm. So I'm going to go with Layla, too. I, I think that, you know, Chris, it's not going to hurt Chris if she has a loss. I think that she could be a competitor for the title if they put her in the right program. Maybe they'll get back around to it. But um, I think they need to start building people like Layla. So I, I think that Layla wins. I, and I think this might, like, go on a little bit because, yeah, that was a nasty dig. How dare you? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and then you remind, I was just thinking, I don't know why that reminded me. I, I, literally, there's no connection, but uh, we didn't cover the Wardlow Cesar Bononi match. Um, and all I will say, it's just, you know, it was, it, it was, was a squash. Have, yeah, yeah, but, um, but it was nice to see Cesar Bononi back on TV, you know, and uh, hopefully his wife has all, um, recovered, uh, and all that stuff. And it was nice to have them have a little stretch with him too during the pandemic and all that stuff. So just good to see him back. Good to see that he still looks like in the same shape. Like that guy is, looks like an animal. It's unbelievable. But, um, speaking of being in good shape, Hook versus QT Marshall for the buy-in. I didn't know this was booked. I'm, I'm excited about that. I, I didn't know this was hooked. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm excited <laughs> for this. I, I'm, you know, obviously QT Marshall's going to squash Hook. Um, but what do you think? I mean, if, if nobody has been following my Twitter or I haven't made it apparent to you yet, I am a huge Hook fan. Um, I I I feel kind of weird because I'm totally in love with him and I'm like 20 years a senior. Um, I think he's great. I love his whole gimmick. I think everything. I, there's no way he loses. Uh, he he's he's the modern day human suplex machine of his father, but better looking. And um, he's just I I I, I no. I, I will never ever say. 
Hook's not going to win. It's kind of like my CM Punk thing that I was going through in the 2012s in that era. CM Punk was always, it didn't matter. I always said he was going to win. So Hook is, Hook is winning. There's no way QT Marshall is going to get a win over, you know, this rising very, very quick guy who didn't even wrestle and was already over when he had his debut match. Uh, there's no way. It's Hook. Yeah. So it's I, Hook. I think it's going to be a better version kind of of when they did the QT Marshall, um, Paul White match. Uh, you know, I'm surprised. I wouldn't have put this on the buy-in. I would have taken that Tornado Tag match, uh, Trios Tornado. I don't want to put that on the buy-in, and I would have put this. Um, I'm sure they're going to do some crazy stuff, and that's why it's not on the – but I, I just think it's an unnecessary match to put on the show. I would have switched these two around. I think this would have been a good palate cleanser. Um, but, yeah, I'm with you. I think Hook is like a uh, – like if – Taz and Justin Bieber had like a love child. It's like, <laughs> and then and then you like put him on I don't know like cool person steroids. Um, yeah, he's so cool. He's just he's he so is. Cool. I, I get it. I'm like he's his. So I, I'm cool. just he's like he's someone you'd be intimidated because you just think like. He's just cool. Like, he, like yeah, if he talked to me, I'd be like, oh, my God, he talked to me. Yes, like, exactly. I'd be like, like this guy, like, just, like, stares in the space, chews in the corner. Like, I'm too cool for the room. And he'd be like, what's up? And I'd be like, oh, my God. He's like, like I, me. like, talk to me. He talked to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the cool kid in the room. You can't, you can't have him get... I don't think they have anybody for him to take a loss to yet either. So there's no, no way. He's there's like no the way. person who can chew gum with his mouth open and it's okay. He wouldn't, yeah. but he could. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So speaking of which, that uh, Tornado Trios tag team match, I'm not going to give this a lot of time, but you, uh, we have a-, a HFO versus or Darby Allen, Sting, and Sammy Guevara. We talked about Sting and Dar- Darby Allen a little bit and Sammy Guevara earlier, but who do you got for this one? I mean, Sting, Darby Allen, and Sammy Guevara. They're, yeah, they're yeah. all three of them are white hot, you know, um, I love Matt Hardy. I I am not a huge Andrade fan. I know like he's cool and he's a better Del Rio, and I appreciate that because Del Rio is a piece of s. And I hope he's listening to this because I hate his guts. Um, but you know, I I I don't see this partnership. It seems kind of weird. Uh, it's just like kind of like almost like creative has nothing for Andrade, but he can stand alone. And now he's partnering with Matt Hardy. I don't think that anything is going to happen with the house of, uh, Hardy or whatever the home office of the Hardy. Of whatever. Hardy. <laughs> what, what, what are they calling it? I, always I know. Confused. Let's go with that. I love that. The house, house of, of Hardy. Hardy. House of Hardy, whatever their faction or that uh, association is, nothing's going to happen until Jeff Hardy shows up. And we all know Jeff Hardy is coming. So until Jeff Hardy, yeah, it's all but confirmed. So until when Jeff Hardy shows up, which he will, and I don't think we will see the traditional Hardy boys, and I do not think we will see something that they did in TNA. I think it'll be a rejuvenation of their final run because I do think that this is the final run. This is the last hurrah. I mean, they they're one of the most decorated tag team champions of all time they have to be in every federation right like it's just kind of like the Dudley boys dominated everywhere they went the Hardy's got to kind of do the same once Jeff Hardy shows up then I could see the house of Hardy or Hardy home office or whatever they're calling it taking off and getting wins under the belt but Matt I mean other than his hot run that he had in TNA when he was doing the broken Matt Hardy gimmick um he's kind of fallen flat Right now, since he's been in AEW and he's he's kind of put himself in a manager role, which is fun and I appreciate it. So, um, but I just don't see him getting big wins like this, especially over somebody like Darby Allen and, Sa- and Sammy Guevara and, and with Sting. You know, like Sting's getting his cake for every mess up that happened when he went to that other place for a while. They're treating him and utilizing him exactly how they should. So. Mm-hmm. I'm 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 just thinking like Hardy work from home work remotely family office like it's like the Hardy homegrown family office yeah. or a family <laughs> I, business. I what is the property? I think it's I think it's Hardy. Uh, oh now if uh, Hardy yeah Hardy family office but now it's Andrade okay. Hardy family office. Yeah. So um, again House of Hardy. Yeah, House of Hardy. I like that a lot more. I'm I'm gonna hold my tongue because we could go. I could go in. I have my opinions about whether they should sign Jeff Hardy or not. Whether that you know. Um, but but there's a podcast for another time, and, and we'll definitely have you back on, obviously, Mary. Because because speaking of having me having a lot of thoughts about anything, Chris Jericho versus Eddie Kingston. Who do you got, Mary? You know, I don't know. I haven't really thought about this match much. I'm excited <laughs> exactly. for it. I, I'm a, I'm a I'm a lifelong Jericho fan. Okay. I love everything that Chris Jericho does. Um, but you know. I, I have a warm, special place in my heart for Eddie Kingston. So um, I'm going to go with Eddie Kingston on this. I think he needs this win. I think it, it it's um, uh, a, a veteran putting over a new guy, even though, you know, Eddie Kingston's not a, a young chicken or a young duckling. I'm 
being terrible with euphorisms today. I'm sorry. But um, I feel like we're about to get, I, you know, Eddie Case has been on Twitter saying he's trying to get in shape and clean up his act and he really wants to be taken seriously. And I think he needs this one to be taken seriously, even though he's already a fan fan. And, and we're just laughing. My, my computer died. So we'll p- pick up, pick back up where you were. Uh, sorry, Mary, to interrupt you again. You're talking about um, Chris Jericho and, and uh, Eddie Kingston here. Yeah, I don't know exactly where it cut off, but I was just saying I'm going I'm going with Eddie Kingston on this match. I think that, you know, Jericho is uh putting over, you know, people that need to be put over and I just I don't I don't see why he would win here. I, I really don't. Yeah, I'm with you too. I, I I would go with the same thing. Though I, I you know what? Like the the toxic part of it, like I think my toxic trait is that I want Chris Jericho to win this match just to see the internet blow up. Um, I'm I'm with you. I'm a, I think Chris Jericho gets a lot more flack than he deserves. Uh, I think I think uh, I think he's he at the very least the man becomes self aware eventually. I will give him that a hundred percent. And and this is an example of that. And I think his promo on the show is an example of that. Interesting developments too, like room for interpretation with the uh, proud and powerful. And I'm excited about that. Like I'm mm-hmm. willing to see where that goes because it's just again I don't need to be told everything. Like. Give me some time. Yeah. To, I don't even need to know what everything means at the moment, and I thought that was a good example of that. Um, so, I'm, but but I'm with you, Eddie Kingston, as well. Um, well, let's move. I think we got everything besides the the last one being the Face of the Revolution ladder match. You have Keith Lee versus Wardlow. This is a big man match, man. Keith <laughs> Lee versus Wardlow versus Powerhouse Hobbs versus Ricky Starks versus Orange Cassidy versus TBD. Uh, I'm going for TBD. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so <laughs> I'm curious, one, who who you think is going to win this match, and then uh, who you think is going to be uh, TBD? Um, meat slap and meat one. There's there's mm-hmm. a lot of big dudes in this match. Um, Maybe it'll be I mean, Yeah, right. Could you imagine? He's like screw it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as the people that are that are that are scheduled for the match that are in the match right now, it's got to be Keith Lee. I mean, I I would not. I understand the other guys are AEW talent and stuff like that, but like it just seems like Keith Lee came out last week or the week before and he you know he's on uh, rampage tomorrow night too but he came out and he made a statement and they were like this we are behind this guy and we're gonna let keith lee do keith lee things um so i would it would be crazy to me to see anybody else win this match i'm not saying nobody will but I, again AEW, i i'm never confident in my decisions like i am when i watch a wwe pay-per-view i always know who's gonna win at the wwe pay-per-views and it's a good thing i like being surprised but i i think that Keith Lee is going to walk in and win this match just as a statement, like be on the lookout. You guys got to go through me now. Um, and I mean, how could you not want Keith Lee again? So happy that they picked him up. Um, mm-hmm. As far as the TBD, I don't know. I don't know who the TBD is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be somebody within AEW or if it's going to be a surprise, you know, like somebody they just signed. I mean, and that, you know, depending on it could whoever that be, that could be the winner of the match. Could be TBD because it seems, you know, like this is going to be a debut of sort of. And I don't think it's going to be like somebody that's already in AEW that hasn't wrestled in a while unless something happens on Rampage tomorrow night, which I'm not aware of anything like that. I mean, is there another qualifying match or is it just like we're going to have a surprise entrance on Sunday? Do you know that? Hey, that's a good question. I didn't do my research. I'm going to go with no just for S's and G's. Um, I, I, I told you, I think the only thing that's happening on Friday that's that's we should know about or, or should consider is, you know, Hook winning the world title. But other than that, yes. I, I don't I don't think there's anything going on. So I don't I don't know who TBD could be. It could be a lot of people, man. Mm, like I said, um, again, going back to my House of Black theory, what if it's a new member of the House of Black? What if it is a member of the House of Black? I, I don't I don't know. Um, there's a lot of free market people out there right now. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a Carrion Cross or a Bray Wyatt or you know, um, give me another indie person that's out right now that or was released that hasn't been picked up by anybody yet. You got anybody? Um, I, so these aren't necessarily, like, I don't know if I can give you an indie person necessarily, but I do have, like, with the way the world is right now, especially in Japan, a lot of these guys who, um, you know, the travel restrictions and all this stuff going on, mm-hmm. like, a lot of these guys haven't been able to, to, to be what they were for a long time, you know what I mean? And, and mm-hmm. I'm, and I'm, and I know there's a lot going on outside of the sandbox, as we like to call it here, but, like, uh, 
I, I want, it's not going to be, there's no chance in hell, but I'm still going to go with it. I want it to be, uh, uh, Will Ospreay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's going to be Jonathan Gresham from Ring Mm -hmm. of Honor. Uh, Mm -hmm. that's my best assumption considering the news and all that stuff. And, and, and you know what? It doesn't always need to be this giant star as a thing. Like no, like shame on, I was about to say no slut shame on Ethan Page, but there's actually Mm -hmm. been a lot of slut shaming around Ethan Page and well, we're not even going into that. Um, but uh, but no shame on Ethan Page. I anybody again who listens to these shows knows I adore Ethan Page. I think he's got a lot of talent. And he's got a great face for this whole thing, and I think in a, in another world, you know, he could uh, he could definitely be doing a lot more than he's doing right now. But um, I uh, I think it's gonna be. I think you're right. I think Keith Lee is probably what's gonna happen. But I think the uh, Joker is gonna be Jonathan Gresham, and, and I don't. I I think he's gonna have a good showing, but I don't think he's gonna win. Oh, you know what? I'm so wrong, Mary. I'm finally, my my slow internet finally loaded. <laughs> Speaking of Ethan Page, TBD is because Ethan Page versus Christian Cage, I have a face of the revolution qualifier. So there is no joke. Yeah, so there, there is no TBD. We just made all these assumptions for no reason. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> it's okay. I didn't know Fun either. the fantasy book looking. as it was. So it was Ethan Page versus Christian. It's definitely going to be Ethan Page then. Yeah, I, I, I think this is going to A lot of like story. Christian hasn't wrestled in a while. So maybe they're like, oh, we're going to throw Christian in the mat in the ladder match. I mean, he is a king of ladder match. You know what? I take that back. It is going to be Christian. Okay, well, I'm, I'm thinking Ethan Page. And this also said, you know, I might change my tag team match prediction. I think Jurassic Express is going to lose. I think Christian Cage is going to cost jungle boy this is all before friday by the way i'm i'm booking this before anything's come out i think christian kids is going to cost somehow some way cost the uh the dressing express the titles and finally we're going to go into that feud or it's not going to happen it's going to wait till the next pay-per-view but still i'm 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 just trying to book something interesting here Mm -hmm. yeah no so that's what that's what my predictions are um i think keith lee wins it and i think christian ends up being the last uh uh uh, opponent, and I don't even know. I can't even think of the word right now. Last person entered into the match. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I think I think it's Keith Lee too. I think the only other person is uh, is Wardlow maybe, but um, I can more so see MJF just you know nagging him about the loss. You know, I think that's almost better for the story than if you want because you don't you don't none of these guys lose anything from losing a ladder match. But mm-hmm. the person, if you could lose anything from losing a ladder match, is going to be Keith Lee. And I mean, Keith Lee is coming from NXT, and NXT is a ladder match every other week, so uh, he should be very experienced at this point. I guarantee you, Keith Lee has been in more ladder matches than Christian Cage. Mm-hmm. What? Um, yeah, I'll, Did- I'll I'll look up the stat right now. Um, Mimi, you you realize this is Edge and Christian, right? Christian. Mm-hmm. You like realize they were a tag time tag team dominant like in the late nineties to the early two thousands and this was their gimmick. How many have, did you watch NXT? I mean, yeah, but there's there's no way there there's, was a ladder match every other week. <laughs> I, I'm, I I I I I love your enthusiasm. I have to disagree with you about this. There is no way that Keith Lee has been in more ladder matches than Christian Cage. There's just no way. I'm not going to be able to find this well enough because I'm slow and the internet so confuses me. But one of you out there, you're on the Twitter. I'm calling DJ Kuzma. I'm calling you out, really, because I think you you, you, you probably know this off your hand. Um, but who's 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 been in more ladder matches? Christian Cage. I'm talking about every, promo, uh, every promotion. Let's go with every promotion ever. Who's been in more ladder matches? Christian Cage or Keith Lee? If, if... If I'm wrong, which I very well could be, and again, you have a lot more wrestling knowledge than I do too, um, and I'm just being over. It. Sometimes I'm so satirical it seeps into my own brain and it becomes real. Um, but uh, if I'm wrong, I bet it's close. I bet it's close. I mean, it could be. Triple I just, H and Shawn Michaels love a ladder match. <laughs> I, I understand that. I, I'm not. I, I understand your reasoning. I'm just thinking about how they redefine the ladder match. Oh, 100%. And, like, they've and, definitely... And, and they've been around, like, they at least have, like, 20 years on Keith Lee. <laughs> like, like, Christian has, like, at least 20 years on Keith Lee. Like, at least. He is, like, pushing 50. There's no... Uh, uh, and he's been not just in WWE. He has been in TNA. He has been here. Like, he was a champion in TNA for a little bit. That is where he got Christian Cage moniker. There, yeah. I just 
I don't I, I I have to highly disagree with you. About this. I'm a I'm a low better. I like going for the the high odds, so I'm going for it. Somebody somebody help us because I'm I'm the internet's hard for me. But that's a perfect transition, Mary. Into first of all, thank you again. Thank you for for, for dealing with my dead computer. It's old, man. This thing I've had for too long at this point. Not really though. Keep keep. I like don't want to jinx it. I need to find wood to knock on. Um, <laughs> everybody knows a good laptop. You can't go wrong with a good laptop for a long time. But. Uh, Anyways, what was I saying? Oh, yes, Mary, thanks so much for coming on the show <laughs> and uh, and dealing with me and my laptop rants and, and the dying of it and all that other stuff. Um, where where can they tweet you that Keith Lee has been in more ladder matches than Christian Cage? Uh, you guys can tweet me at Mare underscore Bear, B-A-R-E, on Twitter. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Pop and Stir Eleven, even though I'm not on there much. But uh, you can tweet at me about how Christian Cage has been in way more ladder matches than Keith Lee. Um, and, and I will, you know, bet a dollar on it. I, I'm well, I'm pretty secure in this, this, this reaction. But I don't know. I could be wrong, but that's where you guys can find me at. And thank you so much for having me on again. It was fun. I'm glad that you like my banter and my disagreeing with you because that's what makes good shows is never having the same opinion, always having different opinions. Absolutely. I think I think I 100 percent agree. And um, and I was going to say, uh, if uh, if if you are right, I would give you that dollar. But that that is that is how tough times are right now. So I will bet you a <laughs> metaphorical dollar. <laughs> Okay, that's fair. That's thing. fair. I, it's all good. Maybe like a chocolate bar or something in the future. What, mm, first day. time we ever meet in real life, you owe me a beer. How about that? Uh, um, I, I can do that. I can do that. Okay, right, if, if I'm right. And then you can figure out what you want, and I'll give it to you. I want um, I want you to sit down and watch every single Keith Lee ladder match. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would do that. <laughs> Mary, you're the best. Like... <laughs> Thank you for coming on again. I really appreciate it, and have a great night. All right, enjoy the pay-per-view. See you soon.